You have a question? I have a question. Instead of hitting you with We Are Back, I have a question. And is it, it for me? This is this for every woman who listens to our podcast? Oh. And men, I want you to pay attention as well, but this is directed towards women. And, okay. and I'm going to ask the question, and I want you to think on it while we house clean. And before we get into emails and conversations, I will get into why I'm asking the question. Okay. If you had to choose one mm-hmm. as a woman, would you rather be told that you are beautiful or that you're a good mother? You don't have to answer. I want all of you, everyone, everyone, everyone that's listening to think about this. Men, you have a, a reason that I'm, I want you to pay attention, but ladies, I want you to think about that for a minute. There's a reason for that, and I will get into it, but I, I want to, I just want them to absorb that for a minute to really think about it because there's obviously one of two ways that you can answer that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but the way that you answer that question is going to tell me a lot about your marriage. With that being said, before you keep going, yes, you can be told both. But that's not the question. Right. Well, yeah, if you're if, if both is your answer, that negates the question. Right. Right. So you you have to choose one or the other, like really sit down and think about it and explain why you're choosing the one you're choosing. Right. Um, on to the house cleaning. We have. Oh, man, so much. So first of all, we tried to do this yesterday. Um, it got aggressive. It, I got aggressive. I got very aggressive. Yesterday. I got pretty shitty. Um, and we deleted the emails. Mm-hmm. Um or deleted the content and removed the emails. We're not even going to address the emails because of the way that they bothered me. We are, we had a whole lot happen yesterday. Oh, Ye- wow. Yesterday was, was a whirlwind, a tornado mm-hmm. that takes a Cyclone. house and, and sends it to another universe mm-hmm. and takes you to Oz. See what I did there? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it was really stupid. I do. I see what you did. <clears throat> we had the really, really bad recording experience yesterday morning. Mm-hmm. Got in the car, drove to Tampa, which is about two hours for us. Forgot the tickets at home. <clears throat> yeah. So there was a, just an accumulated frustration going on. <laughs> there was traffic. We were in traffic for like an hour and a half. Yeah. We um we had, dude, there's so much. We had a lot of discussions about the podcast. Um, on the way up. On the drive up there. We also talked about possibly recording episode 13, which is the one that we're on right now, because we didn't want to put out that kind of content. We don't want to be those people. It's just right. not what we do. Um which is why we're going to start cherry picking emails mm-hmm. and really start moving forward with that. The discussion that we had in the car on the way up there was about re-recording and, and the way that this is going to look moving forward, doing possible t-shirts and merchandise and trying to broaden our to be better universe because we've created a community. So we went through all that talked about the merchandise, got to Wicked last night because we went and saw Wicked, which is why I made the Wizard of Oz joke, which, by the way, this Wicked cast was phenomenal. I had so much fun. They did such a fantastic job. The alphabet at the last one I saw sang better. Like this one, this one killed it. Like she killed it. Oh, she the did one great. last year, the last the last one I went to, I think was a little more, more impressive in terms of her scene. Mm-hmm. But overall, this entire cast is better. I had a blast last night. We walk into the Strass Center, which is where Wicked is playing in Tampa until I think the end of the month. Mm-hmm. And uh, we walked in. And before we even got to the door of where we needed to go for our seating, somebody stopped us. Yeah. And and like you were expecting somebody to compliment your your piercings or your hair because you get that a I, lot. I'm, I'm constantly complimented when I'm out. And before we really get into what happened, like I was out of my element. I was trying to figure out my surroundings, trying to figure out where everything was. There were hundreds of people walking around. Thousands. And I, I was thousands overwhelmed. Thousands of people. I was 100% overwhelmed. They were almost completely sold out last night and yeah. there was 2,600 seats in that, that auditorium. Wow. So there was thousands of people there. Yeah. And within the first. I would say the five minutes of us being there. Yeah. Three to five minutes. Somebody was like, I just want to say I love your guys' videos. She, she hit me. I, I grabbed my chest. I, I don't know what I said out loud, but I thought, shut the fuck up. You might have to bleep that because this is so early. Yeah. In. It <clears throat> caught me off guard bad. Yeah. So we went and you got a drink. Yeah. Uh, I went and got a diet soda. 
and we walked up to her because we were fangirling hard over the fact that someone recognized us. Like yeah. the, the whole time that we were in line for a drink, mm-hmm. that was a discussion. When we got to the other line, because the, the alcoholic beverages and the sodas weren't in the same place. We were like eyeballing her. Yeah. Like, kept, is she still there? Yeah. <laughs> trying to make sure she's still staying there so that we could walk over and talk to her. <clears throat> her name was Amber. Yeah. Amber is our first ever met in public fan. Fan. Yeah. And I think we fangirled harder than she did. I agree with that. She made my night. Yeah. Yeah, like it, that, we saw Wicked. Yeah. And she made my night. And we talked about it the whole ride home. We did. So we're at a point now where we are getting recognized in cities that are not our own. Yeah. Because of our podcast. And people, she posted it on our Instagram. Like she, she fanned. Yeah. We fanned way harder. <laughs> um, this, this is a very eye opening thing. Yeah. Because of the way that I acted yesterday on the podcast, I already knew that I, I didn't want to put that on the internet and I needed to re record it. We talked about revenue streams, potential merchandise and things moving forward. All of the stuff that we talked about on the way to Tampa already had me thinking like we need to do better. Like I, I don't I don't want to do that. Right. And then we mm-hmm. met her and she she hit us with the positivity mm-hmm. and, and it, it changed the entire course of the way that I wanted to record. Um, I have a vision board that's going up right there at some point today that I'm going to start putting our, our vision stuff on. And I'm going to put a picture the because th- we took a picture with we took a picture with her. I was like, hey, we can, did. Can we take a picture with you? <laughs> she didn't even ask <clears throat> us for a photo. We were like, can we take a picture with you? Yeah, I, we, uh, we fanned. It we was fanned a massive hard. moment. Yeah, yeah. It, it completely caught me off guard. So I'm going to print that photo and stick it on, on the vision board because I want that memory to be solidified in my brain when I start getting frustrated with emails to look up and see that to remember that there are we're people there are people that are sending these emails and though yeah. we only hear the situations. And get frustrated with the situations. I need to be reminded that there is a person on the other side of that email. Mm -hmm. And that was a very big eye opener for me last night. Because it's very easy for me to shit on somebody when they say something stupid. Because I get frustrated by it. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. So there's that. We have a new recording schedule. So much. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We have content going on YouTube. Podcast at 9 a.m. Monday. Side show on Wednesday at 9 a.m. And the side piece today at 9 a.m. Friday. Which we did a premiere for. And with no notice and still had almost a hundred people in the live chat, which was shut up. Yeah, it was pretty nice and got super chats and, you know, people interacting. We got a bunch of patrons from it. it it's cool. Mm-hmm. I, I really enjoy doing the premiere chats. It, it gets me to interact with people that we otherwise don't interact with. Yeah. <clears throat> our patron group, our Patreon group was a huge part of that because I was able to get in there and be like, Hey guys, we're going live on a premiere YouTube, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, Oh, here we go. Right from discord, right over to YouTube. So that's the thing. For those of you who listen to us on streaming services, iTunes, Apple, Amazon, Spotify, um, I guess Apple and iTunes is the same thing, but whatever. Uh, you guys are getting two two content releases a week moving forward. You'll get Monday and Thursdays. So we'll get um, Monday will be the podcast. Thursday will be either the side show or the side piece, depending on what I decide I want to put up there. Uh, right now, I'm overly enthusiastic about the side piece. We've gotten we posted that privately to Patreon and then to the YouTube group so that we can have them pre-screen to give us feedback on whether or not what we're doing works. And we got a ton of positive feedback on those. And I would like to make sure that we continue doing those moving forward. Um, what else do we have? I feel like we had a whole lot that we needed to discuss. Uh, I would say that was just it. There had to have been more than that yesterday because we were like 30 minutes of house cleaning yesterday and we're nine minutes in right now. There was something else we wanted to talk about that we could have just talked about in this segment instead of making it its own individual video. Oh, cheating and expecting to have what we have. Okay. Let, let's hold that for after housekeeping. I okay. just, I don't want to forget all, um, for those of you who are not, oh, it was the YouTube discord crossover. Oh, so we have a mm-hmm. YouTube membership platform as well as our, our Patreon. For those of you who are in Patreon, you will get live streams and you will get the Discord channel and you will get things that YouTube memberships don't get. Uh, However, we are going to start making content that is cross-promotable for YouTube and Patreon so that if you are a member of either one of those, you will get early release and exclusive content. Mm -hmm. The exclusive content that goes to Patreon, um, or I'm sorry, that goes to YouTube will always go to Patreon and there will be exclusive to Patreon only content that will not go to YouTube mainly emails of people who want to not be that are very concerned about the privacy, things like that. They want to remain completely anonymous and they're Mm -hmm. worried about that being heard. That just goes to Patreon, but we are working on getting things together so that we can have a dual um, promoting crossover kind of thing. We're also working on doing live streams on Thursdays on YouTube, but we haven't solidified that yet and haven't solidified timeframes because we have to figure out our record schedule to make that work. 
but that's coming. And I, I'm saying probably within the next month, we will have live streams running on YouTube. Um, that covers the house cleaning thing. Do you want to talk about that before I get into my question that I asked at the beginning? Because that was a huge part of our discussion yesterday. Um, do you want to do that or do you want me to do it? I mean, we can get into it. Okay. <clears throat> I, I think it's going to be a conversation. Right. Well, I meant like the intro to the whole oh, thing. Yeah, you can do it. <clears throat> so we had, we've received two emails. Mm -hmm. One from a woman, one from a man who said, the opening email, we love you guys. We love what you do. We want our partners to look at us the way that you look at each other. In the very next paragraph, I cheated on my partner. No, the very next sentence. In one of them, yeah. Yeah, and it was fresh. It was a week. <clears throat> cheated on my partner a week ago. Yeah. And I, I want him to look at me the way that Chris looks at you. You guys are not going to get that level of love and commitment when you're doing foul shit. Mm -hmm. You're just not. And and I, and, and cheating is not necessarily just physical. If it's you're sending provocative photos. Right. It is sexting. It is flirting over messenger and then deleting the text messages. Yeah. It's telling, telling more to, to, uh, to your, about your marriage to somebody that you're not in a relationship with than what you're telling your partner about that person. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we view as, is inappropriate cheating porn, you know, the whole thing. Like there's a lot. Um, porn. Yeah. Porn. There's, there's a lot that goes into those things. And when you guys send emails like that to us, um, I, I'm just not going to answer them. I, I'm not. So there's a couple of things, and I was supposed to make a check, checklist of all of this so that I can go over the bullet points, but there are things that I'm not willing to answer in emails anymore. If people are minors, mm -hmm. if you're 17, 18 years old, and you're sending us an email about somebody you've been in a relationship for two months with, I'm not helping you. No. You're still in the learning phases of things, and if you're having problems two months into this relationship, you're already doomed. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not, I'm not getting involved in that. If you've been with somebody for less than a year as an adult, and you're having problems, I'm not getting involved in that. If you've been married to somebody for 10 years and you've got a whole life with these people, I'm invested. Yeah. Because at this point, you guys have already done a lot of work trying to make your shit a uh, cohesive marriage. Mm -hmm. So the communication mm -hmm. advice that we can give, you guys are committed to each other. It's a lot harder to walk away from somebody when you have a decade with them than it is to walk away from somebody that you've been with for two months. Right. And when you send emails and you're like, you know, we're new and I cheated, why? Why would you do that? Right. You're trying to build a foundation with somebody and you can't you can't like even date and and remain true. Like if you can't do that in the first year of your relationship, you're not going to be able to do it in 10. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a whole lot in that. Um, I think that was all of the main bullet points that we talked about last night. Was there anything that I missed on what we weren't going to answer moving forward? We're not doing if you send if you send us a super short email, we're not answering that either unless it's like a, a broad topic. Mm -hmm. Because we can do broad topics on the <clears> side <throat> piece. But if you're like, my husband doesn't communicate with me, what do I do? I'm not answering that email. You right. didn't give me enough information to even have a back and forth with you. As you were about to say, we're not doing DV. What else? If you are in a situation, for example, you two are living separately and you're paying for all of her bills and you're asking us if she's using you. I feel like that's a common sense scenario. Yeah. If you're not living together but you're paying for everything for her <clears throat> and you guys aren't even in a relationship. I'm going to view that as using, yeah. you know, if you're going above and beyond to prove to her that you're a provider, but you guys don't even have the title of being in a relationship. That's a common sense scenario. I'm not going to answer uh, traditional values when they live in separate homes. Yeah. We're not getting into that either because mm -hmm. we don't believe that you can do that. You shouldn't be trying to live like you're married if you're not living together. Um, what was it that she sent us last night? Uh, we're not your yes men. If you send us an email and you're the problem, we're going to tell you that you're the problem and you're not going to like it. So in the event that you send us an email and you are absolutely the problem, you're probably not going to get a video response. You may get an email. You may get an email that says, hey, you're the problem. And that's going to be the end of it. I'm not going to get any details as why you're the problem. You type the email. You know what it says. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, before moving on, the having what we have and then cheating and then trying to get that... If your partner chooses to work past this with you, to get to where we are is going to take you years yeah. of earning back that trust and building that trust with that person. We mentioned a book prior. I can't remember what it's called. I can get it because it's on my Audible. <laughs> but he said it took at least 10 years yeah. for their relationship to go back to where it was before he cheated. That book is called Worthy of Her Trust by Stephen Arterburn, A-R-T-E-R-B-U-R-N. 
So if you cheat and you want what we have with the person that you cheated on, you're going to have to accept the fact that you did that damage. Right. And you're going to have to pay the time for it. That doesn't mean that they can throw it into your face vindictively and continue to accuse you of cheating. Right. But if they come to you and say, I need to look at your phone and it's been six months, you should let them look at right. your phone. Yeah, you need to be able to validate what they're going through. Because right. you did it. It's your fault. Mm-hmm. Um, that's actually a pretty decent read. There is a religious undertone to it. For those of you who are, are not into religion, just be prepared that that's, that's part of the book. The author that wrote it is a Christian, so there's mm-hmm. going to be that undertone. Um, but he said in that book that it took him the years that it took him, but his wife said, I'm really glad that we worked through this because our life is better mm-hmm. than it ever was before because yeah. of, of what he was willing to do to... Earn her um, trust back. Right. And, you know, you used to say all the time that when you break a vase, you can glue that vase back together, but it's never going to have the same structural integrity mm-hmm. that it had before it broke. And it's never going to look the same. No. And so that's the way trust is. When you break that trust and it's shattered, you're not going to ever be able to have the way it was before. It's always going to have some marring on it. So yeah, you have to keep that in mind. It's going to look the same, but it's going to have damage. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it might look the same. It, mm-hmm. it may not. It, you know, those those cracks. You, yeah. Those... You could have missing pieces. <coughs> yep. <clears throat> you might have to build a smaller vase out of the pieces you have left. Yeah. So the reason I asked that question at the beginning of the podcast, would you rather be called beautiful or would you be rather be told that you're a good mother? Mm-hmm. You want to answer that first and then I can get into why I, I did that? I would be rather. I would be rather. I would rather be told that I'm a good mother. Why? You show me that I'm beautiful in other ways. When you grab me around the waist and you kiss me on the neck while I'm cooking or when we're laying on the couch and you just look at me and don't say anything. I know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. You don't have to tell me. When it comes to mothering, having that outside support of like you're doing good. I see what you're doing. You're doing better. You're a great mom. That I'm getting emotional. That shit. That's the kind of things I need to hear. Right. So that that goes to show how strong our relationship is, yeah. right? Because I I am emotionally invested in you. I, I do tell you you're a good mom, but mm-hmm. I, the you do. the physical attraction that we have is um, reinforced every single day. Mm-hmm. Good morning, beautiful. You look you look fucking hot in that dress. I love your hair. You know those compliments come daily for me. Yeah. Um, there are two answers to that question, obviously beautiful or mom. Mm-hmm. And if you said, I want to be told I'm beautiful, it's because you are lacking intimate emotional communication with your partner. You're not getting it. Or you feel like you are only a mother. Mm-hmm. And if you feel like you're only a mother, that <clears throat> ties back to the first thing. But those were the answers I got. The answer I got was, I feel like I'm a mother all the time. Being told I'm beautiful is not something I hear very often. I would like to hear that. Or I was told, I know that I'm a good mother. Or I know that I'm beautiful. So the ones who are like, I want to be told I'm a good mother. I know I'm beautiful. Well, mm-hmm. do you not know that you're a good mother? Like, you know you're beautiful. So you're, you, your ego is there when it comes to your attractiveness. But you are you sh- falling short as a mother? And if so, why? <clears throat> um, so I, And the reason I originally posted that is because I wanted to see how long it took for somebody to say, um, to give me this exact response. And it was less than 10 minutes from the time I posted the TikTok. Okay. She said, beautiful. And did like the little hearty face thing. Mm -hmm. For me, it's so easy to forget. I even exist as an individual to see that he recognizes me as beautiful is amazing. Less than 10 minutes for me posting that TikTok. That was the answer. Wow. And I was waiting for somebody to say that 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes. The other one I got said such a good question really made me think I would say beautiful. Uh, And then, and I was like, yeah. Okay, so we're still on the same page. And the one right below that said, good mother, I know I am beautiful. And that was that was the third response where I was like, okay, so you know you're beautiful, but you don't know you're a good mother. What does that say about your mothering? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it, I went down a whole rabbit hole of all of this. Because if you know you're a good mother and that's what your husband is promoting you as, you're a good mom, you're doing your job, you know, thanks for taking care of the kids, you're killing it on homework, you know, fucking dinner was great tonight. Where is your intimacy? Your kids should always be taken care of. Mm-hmm. But your partner should always come first because as your kids grow up and they move out, your partner is going to be the one that's left. You have to to keep your marriage alive and intimate and growing until you're dead. Unless you're going to, you know, jump from marriage to marriage to marriage. If you have a healthy marriage and everything is going great in your relationship, your kids are going to have a dope life because you've got a man that wants to provide and protect and lead and he's going to take care of his household and you know that if you're happy, you're going to have a happy home. Mm-hmm. Your kids are going to get a better version of you because you're happy and in love and life is great. 
Whereas if your relationship is suffering and you're miserable and angry and bitter that your husband doesn't do what he needs to do or that your wife doesn't do what she needs to do, that negativity in your household is going to affect your children Mm -hmm. because you're going to be having a bad day and somebody's going to come in and say something and you're going to fly off the handle and the kids are going to want to get attention. You're going to be too fucking annoyed to give your kids the attention that they need, whether it's proper attention on helping them do their homework, um, you know, just being able to look at them do, look at this, and they do something stupid, and you'd be like, yeah, good job. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'd be like, I don't care. <clears throat> you're going to give your kids a very different version of you because you're fucking miserable. So, go ahead. In both of those scenarios, you're also modeling to them what a relationship should be. Yep. That's a, that's exactly it. That was going to be my next point. We were, we were right there. <laughs> yeah. Your kids are going to mimic what they see. Mm-hmm. So, if you're in a relationship with an abusive man or a psychotic woman, or a, a negative Nancy, your kids are going to grow up and they're either going to mimic that behavior or they're going to find somebody that mimics that behavior. And do you want your kids to date in the same way that you are miserable right now? Like, do you want them to follow in those footsteps? If you are a beta male mm-hmm. and you want to be, you've always dreamed of being a real man, an alpha male, and you wanted to be able to lead and protect and provide and do all the things that a man is supposed to do in your eyes and you're falling short, do you want your daughter to find another man like that and marry him? If you're abusive to your wife and you smack her around, do you want your daughter to marry a man who thinks that it's okay to smack a woman around? I guarantee you that you don't. All of this stems to the relationship that you have with your partner. Mm -hmm. The better your relationship (laughs) is, the more cohesive and and working together the two of you are and in love, not loving each other, but fucking in love, the better your kids' lives are going to be all the way around. I like that you made that distinction between loving somebody and being in love because those are two totally separate different feelings. Yep, it really is. It really is. You can have love for anybody. Mm-hmm. You love your mom. Yeah. You love your cousins. You love your siblings. Your friends. But that doesn't mean that you're in love with them. Right. And that, when, that in love matters. It does. That changes what the relationship is. That's what makes it that intimate relationship where you can be with that person and you can only solely have those things with that one person. Yep. Or multiple people if you have the plethora of other options. <laughs> I was just going to say polyamory, but I got schooled very hard on TikTok. So in the planes of multiple relationships that are romantic. Somebody commented on that that short that was posted this morning. It might have been on the full length of, of that exact conversation and said that I think it's crazy that people just dismiss all of these other things. And monogamy is just a religious based blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, we're religious, so that makes sense on the monogamy thing. Right. And us being dismissive, as you called it, of other relationship types is us staying in our lane. We're not going to speak on something we haven't experienced. Mm-mm. So so tell me, how am I being dismissive by just speaking on what I know versus trying to talk out of the side of my neck on some shit I have no idea about? Could you imagine if I sat here and just started pulling shit out of my ass about how a polyamorous relationship works and right. then I destroy other people's relationships because they want to be, they want to feel like I'm including them? Right. Oh, yeah, but you're dismissive because we're not talking about it. I'm not being dismissive. I'm just saying there are other options. I know. I know That's you know. the stupid That's shit why I'm that we saying hear it. in the comments, though. Like, uh, I'm saying it for the people who comment yeah. those things. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was a big discussion. And, and I want you guys who answered that in either direction to really think about why. And men, I, I included you in this because you now have to look at that and, and ask yourself, is your woman solely a mother mm-hmm. or is she your fucking woman? And for all of you who get offended by me saying your woman or your man, you can eat it. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm hers. She's mine. You know, we were talking about it in the car on the way to Wicked last night. Why wouldn't you want to feel like you belong to someone? Like, that's going to be your forever person. Right. Because people want to be like, oh, well, that's possessive and I'm not a slave. Well, you're damn right I'm possessive. Yeah, you should be. That's my man. Right. You should be protective over the things that you love. You should covet those things. Right. And keep them safe. Like And make them a priority. Like how you wouldn't let someone berate your mother at work. Yeah. You're going to defend your person. That's your mom. Yep. That's my fucking man. Try me. Yep. I like that. <laughs> uh, so for, for men, you need to ask yourself which one of those categories you think your woman falls in. And when you really explore that and you know whether or not she's in mother mode or if you are actually telling her she's beautiful and you are holding her on a pedestal and Mm -hmm. showing her that she's on a pedestal and treating her like she's on a pedestal, then you can start making up for the other one. So if you, if you, you know, like we, I tell you way more about your attractiveness and about us than I do about the kids. Mm -hmm. I I acknowledge that. 
Um, and, and there could be reasons for that. And I could probably really explore that right now if I needed to, but I'm not going to. Um, so I do try to tell you like, Hey, you're, you know, when you take the kids to the park, you go for a walk, like you go get your mommy time. Like you need that. It's important to you. Um, so on my end where I would need to pick up the other end of that slack is I need to start being like, Hey, you bought the kid dino nuggets. Good job. Like, you know, you're fucking killing it on the mom front. I need to start implementing that a little bit so that it's not a a lopsided scenario. I will always make sure first and foremost that you are appreciated as my woman Mm -hmm. and as a mother secondary. So it'll never be a 50, 50 thing. It'll probably be like a 70, 30 thing. And if the kids were biologically mine, it'd probably be like a 60, 40 thing, but I'm still going to put my partner above my children because when my kids move out and start their own family, my family is still here. Mm -hmm. And that also goes to speak on when you marry somebody, you're not joining a family, you're creating your own. So that it goes that way with us. And when, when little man grows up and gets his, his little wife and moves out and does this thing. And, and, you know, our daughter does the same thing. They're not marrying into our family or them into somebody else's. It's so that they can start their own. Mm -hmm. And I recognize that. So in the event that we don't get invited over all the time, I'm not going to be sorry about it. Right. You know what I mean? If you want to come over here for for Christmas and and do all of that kind of Mm -hmm. shit, super dope. I would love to have you. There'll be Mm -hmm. gifts and, and like craziness and food and, gravy and biscuits and like we'll cook it up we'll do the thing right but you're not expected i understand that you have a family Mm -hmm. i understand that it's hard to do those kind of things and like that's healthy it is it's fucking healthy so this is what my brain does i've been stuck on that since like 6 45 this morning i love that i woke up thinking about that this morning so i'm gonna piggyback off of that okay some things that you should (laughs) always make a point to tell your partner not every day but at least once a week. I appreciate everything you do. If you guys have kids, you're a great mom, you're a great dad. You need to, throughout the week, just pinpoint something that they do. If they go out of the way to do the dishes, bring it up that night in bed. Hey, I saw that you did that. That that was kind of hot. When you hit your man with it was hot, you did the dishes, he's going to do the dishes more. Yeah. There is a a peace and gratitude. Mm -hmm. And people are like, that's the bare minimum. He lives here too. No, it's not the bare minimum. The fact that that somebody's going above and beyond to do something that, that, that he may view as your job or she may view as your job. Mm-hmm. If, if you're a stay at home and your man does something like the dishes, you thank him for it. Yeah. You don't go to his job and fucking do his job for him. Right. So you're not wh- filing his paperwork. Right. Not coming in and negotiating raises with the bosses. You're not dealing with clients. You're not fixing cars. You're not doing all that. You're home. Mm-hmm. So for him to come home and do something, even if it's something simple, Say thank you. I, I tell you all the time when I see like the bed, you make you make the bed. Mm-hmm. And I told you at like 945 the other night when we were going to bed and we had to pull the sheet down to, to lay down. I was like, I really appreciate that you make the bed every day. You know, when when I lay down and, and the bed is clean and like, you know, you have that fresh scent thing going on. It's nice. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about that. Like you didn't have to wash the bedding. You did it. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, there's there's a lot in, in those small moments. And I want to get into something else because we talked about yesterday about the greeting when we come home. Um, Those small moments of recognition, just let your partner feel seen. Yeah. If your man, if your man takes your car and checks your, your tire pressure, it's just one thing that you don't have to do. Thank him for it. Right. And it's his job. Car maintenance is his job. It's a blue job. Even if it's expected, still thank him for it. Babe, the light bulbs need to be changed. Okay, I got you. Change the light bulbs. Oh, I'd be so extra about it. I'd be like peeking around the corner, looking to trip on that ladder. You you actually made a comment one day on TikTok that you were going to bust out all the lights in the house so you can watch me get on a ladder and change everything out. That's funny. I located all of them too. The um, And I knew like we have high vaulted ceilings, guys, so he would have to like really get up there on the ladder and I would just be able to see his full apple bottom. It would be great. (laughs) Those those moments of gratitude are, are not a necessity, but they go a long way. They do. And if you are more likely to say thank you and less likely to complain or be like it's about fucking time or mm-hmm. make a big deal out of something in a negative manner, you're going to get a more, uh, well, you have a more positive evening first and foremost, but you're going to be able to get that going a lot easier because he's not going to feel resentful towards you because all you do is complain. Right. Or and she, it, for that matter. There's a warmth in that too. Yeah. Like that, that's the only way I can explain it with what we have and the connection we have, the way we communicate and show our appreciation. Our relationship just constantly feels like I'm sitting in front of a cozy fire on a snowy day wrapped in a blanket. <laughs> There's a lot of gratitude It is yeah. because I know that we don't have to do the things that we do for each other. Mm-hmm. We do them because we want to. 
we very, very easily could fall into a, that's your job. This is my job. And neither one of us are helping either one of us. And, and we could live that way. And a lot of people do, and that's fine. It's it, it, you're going to have a better life if you aid each other. Mm-hmm. And I, we've said this thousands of times, the more time you get to spend with your partner, the better your life is going to be. If mm-hmm. you are both constantly working, even a full-time job and then come home and have to do chores and then go to bed, where's, where's your intimacy? You guys are living separate lives at that point. Right. Yep. You're, you're working just to go to bed. Mm-hmm. There's no togetherness in, in love. <clears throat> so that's that. We also talked yesterday on the ride home about... Well, before you do that, I want to say one more thing. Okay. So you, you thanked me for making the bed. And I've been doing that since we've been together. If your wife wakes up every morning and she's been doing it for the last five years or like every Sunday morning and she cooks a big breakfast for your family, tell her thank you. Yeah. If your man comes home at the end of the day and before hopping in the shower, he comes into the kitchen and gives you a kiss every night, tell him you love him doing that. That's actually what I was about to get into. Oh. <laughs> the, the coming home the coming home kissing thing. Oh, the coming home kissing. Would you look at that? Yeah, because we talked. Segue. Yeah. <laughs> Smooth, bitch. Oh, Smooth. yeah. We, <laughs> we, uh, we talked about that last night. We because did. when we're gone, I always make it a point when you leave and you go get groceries or you go do anything and you're gone for more than an hour to stop whatever I'm doing when you walk in the door and walk to wherever you're at. You need mm-hmm. help with groceries. Is there anything I can help you with? I'm glad you're home. It's a quick interaction, but that mm-hmm. quick interaction lets you know that I missed you because I'm I'm coming right to the door. Yeah, um, it lets you know that I care enough to help if you need help. Uh, but there is a warmth in knowing that somebody fucking missed you and that you're coming home to a welcoming. When I'm gone for six or seven hours, it doesn't matter if you're cooking, it doesn't matter if you're cleaning or or doing laundry or laying on the couch. When I come in the door, you stop what you're doing and you come to me. You hug me and kiss me and let me know that I missed. Mm-hmm. Coming home to that versus coming home to, I fucking told you to clean the garage out yesterday. Why didn't you do it? You're going to have a very different life with your partner. And it doesn't take much to just realize that like he could be having a bad day. You could be having a bad day. And if you hit him with your bad day, as soon as he walks to the door and he's had a bad day, you guys are just going to fight. Take that extra second. I missed you today. I fucking missed you today. My day sucked ass. Hug, kiss. My day sucked ass too. You want to talk about it? Yeah, let's vent. You have it out. You talk about how bad your days were, but the intimacy has already started mm-hmm. instead of conflict starting. You want to come home to those situations. You you genuinely look forward to walking in the door. When, you, when you've had a really shitty day and you love somebody. I can't wait to get home. Right. That's all you want is to be with the comfort. You want the comfort of your partner to mm-hmm. just be like, okay, I, I need to fucking vent. And like, I'm not venting my life to other people. Mm-mm. I have you. I have my best friend and I only vent to him when we're in the gym and it's about specific conversations. There's a lot of things that are off limit on my part to a lot of people. So you get the brunt of all of that. So when I'm having a really shitty day and I need to discuss something, you're the one that gets it. I come home and I talk to you about all of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm never told you're stupid. Shut up, you fucking pussy. Like there's none of that. We don't have any kind of negativity until after we've done our pleasantries to let each other know like you were missed. Yeah. And that changes the entire um, role of our evening. It does. It's not hard. You know, you said someone coming home and saying, I told you, I, f- I fucking told you to clean the garage. Mm-hmm. You said that and my heart, like my stomach dropped. Yeah. That's never happened to me. No. But I could never imagine coming home to you and you hitting me with hostility like that. You've never had anybody that too when you come to the door? Not you. Oh. No, I've had people do that. Right. But with you, that's never happened. I should have clarified. Right. And well, yeah, I just, I needed clarity. Yeah. I don't, I mean, that's, you're a woman. Right. It's common for men to hear that from women when they come in. And granted, it's not always it's not always wrong. Mm-hmm. Women can be frustrated. I understand that. But the way that you relay your frustration to your partner matters. Right. If he's not doing the things that have been asked of him and it's been three or four months, it's a problem. Mm-hmm. But it's a bigger problem. It's The problem's not that he hasn't done it. The reason as to why he hasn't done it is the problem. And a lot of the times, it's because you're not communicating things in a way that is going to make him feel good. And when you make somebody feel like ass they're not going to want to do something right if you're constantly mean to somebody and ask them for a favor you're not going to get that favor mm-hmm. they're going to be like why why are you asking me for anything if you have a shitty coworker that's always an asshole to you would you go out of your way to do something for them because they asked you for it absolutely not right and you think that just because th- we're in love that i'm going to go out of my way to do something if you're being nasty to me i'm not right and when you guys realize that your relationship is going to change so the issue is not that he hasn't done it for three months it's that you guys don't know how to talk to each other right 
So when you saying that and my stomach dropping, there are men who feel that daily. Like yep. they're numb to that at this point. They become shells. Hang on. This is Jennifer asking questions. Our screener. Why is my phone not working? Okay. Um, do you have anything else on that topic? I, I did, but it's gone. <laughs> that happens a lot. Yeah. Um, were you going to hit us with a John, John Wick metaphor? Uh, is is I, that where that was going? I don't even remember. You were saying like I, I had the feeling after you said that, and I was like, wow, that's a really shitty fucking feeling. Yeah. And then I, I correlated that to there are men coming home who expect that. Mm -hmm. There is, and they're coming home to a war zone. Yeah. And that ties back into the, why would you want to come home to that? A man shutting down in a scenario like that is in survival mode. Yeah. Yes, they are. And they become a shell of a person that they were because they're not living their life anymore. They're just existing. Right. You have anything else you want to say? Not on that topic. I was going to move on to the next thing. The only other thing that I wanted to talk about before we get into the emails is that uh, we have talked a lot about hormone replacement therapy because we get a lot of emails about men with low libidos. Mm -hmm. uh, we get it from women too. You're going through the change or whatever, like your hormones are messed up. And we constantly tell people you need to get your blood work done. You need to get your blood work done. If you're over 30 years old and you haven't had your blood work done yet, you need to get your blood work done. Um, if you have a low sex drive, if you are finding yourself depressed, if your sleep patterns aren't what they used to be, whether you're oversleeping or undersleeping, that and you're a guy, it could be a testosterone issue. Mm. Uh, it could be an estrogen issue as well. And for women, believe it or not, you can also have testosterone issues. Getting your blood work done can tell you a lot. Because we have been such an advocate for this, I have pushed a couple of different companies that I have done business with in the past because I'm on testosterone replacement therapy. I have been since I was 36, year old, 36 years old. Um, we finally got a coupon code for a hormone replacement therapy clinic called Titan Medical that's in Tampa that I've been doing business with since 2016. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to get your blood work done, you can go to their website, Titan Medical, set up a schedule if you want to. We're waiting, currently we're waiting on a link from them so that I can send out a link to people who want it. But on their website is a phone number. If you call the phone number and tell them that you want to get your blood work done and that you tell them we sent you, there's a coupon code to be better Titan. They will give you a discount. Mm -hmm. I will have all of the information on that because I'm still waiting on them to solidify that in an email so that I have it. But they will discount your blood work or they will discount whatever service that you're getting from them. Um, guys, I can't stress enough how important that is getting your hormones up to par and where they're supposed to be can literally change the way that you feel about your life. When my estrogen is off or my testosterone is low, I'm a mess. It takes two weeks of yeah. being back on my regimen and I feel great. And, and, and this is not a plug for their company. This is personal experience. They have a, a product there called Titan Complete and it is a B vitamin injectable that we both take. That B vitamin injectable is fucking insane. I, I can function on less sleep and like, I don't get tired in the middle of the day when I take it regularly. Like, I feel like I'm on top of the world. And it just, just because it's a bunch of vitamins and it's an injectable, you just shoot it in your arm, mm -hmm. call it a day. Uh, for people who have B deficiencies, obviously that's something that they need. But uh, they also do like ca caffeine, ephedra, and aspirin stack, stacks for ECA stacks for those people who were bodybuilding in the 90s. You remember what ephedra was? They do that. You can buy ephedra from them. Um, and it's legit. Everything is pharmaceutical grade. But. I'm, I'm a, a big, big fan. And I don't know what the discounts are going to be yet because I haven't gotten that email, but I am fucking stoked that we finally have a company that we can send people to that they're going to give a discount, you know, because of our podcast. That's super dope. Yeah, we get like out of four out of every 10 emails oh, yeah. has libido issues. And if you guys just get your blood work done, I, I'm willing to bet that 85 to 90 percent of the time your blood work's not going to be right. Mm -hmm. It's just it's worth it. Yeah. So I agree. We have. um we, can we read the check-in update email first? Is that what you have pulled up? Mm -hmm. Damn, I love you. You were fucking on it, dude. <laughs> yeah. You are on it. So this one is titled Our First Check-In. Okay, I'm going to pause you because this came from a Discord. Um, uh, I'm sorry, a patron that was in the premiere this morning on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That was like, we did our first check-in and it was amazing. Yeah. And I was like, all right, you need to send me an email and tell me how it went so that we can discuss it because... It's one thing for us to tell people how to do things. It's another to actually get confirmation that what we're doing is working. Mm -hmm. And I have not read this email yet. So if it's horrible. It's not. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, she did she did a very good job of putting in detail. She included questions or answers. Dope. Like, Dope. I'm also going to shout out Luca real quick before you get into this. I love Luca. We have a guy on our Patreon that's in the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. Um, he has done all of the documents for us in terms of creating the PDFs. And he emailed me this morning and asked me if I would be okay with him expanding the check-in questions. So he's going to create a new list of questions and send them to me for approval. And if we agree on them, he's going to add them to the the PDF that we've already created and then send it back. Do we have a fifth person on our crew right now? I mean, kind of, kind of do. Cause he's doing, he is doing That's shit behind insane. scenes. He's been handling a lot of the images and shit that we've been doing. Right. I have the goose that yeah. he made saved in my phone. I love his little feet. <laughs> yeah. Um, he helped, he helped get Brian the bison. Yeah. Uh, but he's also been doing PDF stuff. And it wasn't like, it's not like I've, I did ask him to do the PDF thing because he did the first one on his own. Yeah. And, and he then did I, really good. And I was like, bro, I need the check-ins. Like I need you to do the kids check-ins PDF also. And he nailed it. Yeah. And then I was like, I need you to get all the comments from the gentleman video so that I can read through them to see if there was anything there. And like, I could just remove stuff because mm-hmm. of the comment section on YouTube. And that was a complete waste of time, but he did it. And like, no, no questions asked. He's like, yeah, I got you. And, and he did it. We're a five man crew. Kind of. Yep. Yeah, four and a half. I can't count on him all the way on that, but like he's offered to do a lot. And and I think that he probably will be the fifth. And so now we have, we have people all over the world. Literally, literally we have two people in the U S yeah, someone in New Zealand and now somebody in the Netherlands that are yeah. trying to help. And we've had a lot of the, a lot of other people reach out and be like, Hey, I can help you with streaming. I can help you with emails. I can help you with this. I can help you with that. And though I really appreciate all of that, like mm-hmm. I don't want to get too big for my britches. Right. You know, speaking on people being from out of the U.S., I made that video this morning about how we got recognized. There are people who are subscribed to us in Ireland, Mm -hmm. Sweden, Australia. There was one from Nigeria. Wild. It's insane. Another person was like, you guys are blowing up. Like, I was at work and we were all talking about you. Yep. Crazy. That's wild. (sighs) I love you guys. (laughs) All right, into the email. Okay, so warning. It's a long one, but you said to be detailed, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a backstory so that y'all can understand why this is such a moment for me and us. We are both essay survivors. I won't go into detail. That statement alone speaks volumes. That's all we need to know. That is all we need to know. I don't need to know how it happened, where it happened, or how old you were when it happened. Yep, I'm good on that. Mentally, I cannot handle it. (laughs) Like a lot of other people, we have plenty of things in our past that have affected us in some way. We lost a son, and that killed us both on the mental end. Our almost 18 month oh, 18 year old son is struggling with a bipolar, BPD anxiety, and a few other mental health things. I'm sorry, I'm gonna review that. I saw 18, and my mind went to month old. I'm like, don't tell me you like these. Oh, yeah. fuck. Okay. <clears throat> We lost a son, and that killed us both on the mental end. Our almost 18-year-old son is struggling with bipolar, BPD, anxiety, and a few other mental health things. So, can somebody have bipolar and BPD Mm -hmm. at the same time? Yep, and they are a fucking mess. That sucks. Yeah. Oh, man. We have a 16-year-old daughter who should be in therapy for for some things she's been through. However, her biological mom has not taken her and refuses to. Our four-year-old is our rainbow baby and pretty healthy other than her sassy attitude. Oh my God, I get it. Our daughter's getting ready to turn four and like her and I are getting ready to throw down verbally. She's really trying me like she rolled her eyes at me once and I was like, I don't even roll my eyes. Where did... Are we just born with attitude? I don't understand. Our two-year-old has gone through two scares of cancer. However, we recently found out there was no cancer concern and was diagnosed with trauma-bonded PTSD due to things that happened in the daycare she used to attend and is now going through therapy. And that's why I am so pro-stay-at-home mom. <clears throat> I did a lot of research into the daycare the kids went to. Yeah. Like I, I took about six or eight months trying to figure out where they were going to go. And even then for about three months, I was panicking that I was going to get a phone call that they were having bruises or something happened with a teacher. Mm-hmm. 
Our one-year-old was born with a heart defect and is being seen by a doctor for that, but otherwise very healthy. Damn, how many kids y'all got? Um, <sighs> so five, including the one that passed away. One is enough <laughs> for me. <laughs> one, yes. Two is too many. It really is. Oh my God, it is. I love being a mom. They're just a lot. We do have fun. They're like little dance parties and shit. It's fun. <laughs> it's stressful. We get annoyed with each other a lot. Mm. <laughs> I love that our kids are so articulate though, because when they're getting frustrated with me, they look at me and they go, mommy, I'm getting frustrated with you. And I'm like, oh, same Z's. <laughs> Why are you frustrated? And let's figure this out. <sighs> Being a parent's a roller coaster. To see it all written out like that certainly makes you wonder how you've made it this far without giving up. I was thinking that. That all of that is a lot. Nonetheless, we began our check-in with one simple question. How are you? Yes, I overthought the heck out of this question. I am working on that. <laughs> Woo, that's a hell of an Oprah. How are you doing? Fuck, I don't know, man. This is, oh, oh, man, that was so hard. Sweat dropping. It's like the meme with the button. The dude's like. <laughs> I get it, though. There are times like when I'm like an emotional mess and you're like, what are you going through? And I'm deer in headlights. Like, yeah. speaking of sweating. This morning, <laughs> while I was in the shower, you winked at me, and uh, I never realized that you could sweat in a shower <laughs> and have two different types of wet going on, with the wet from the water and then the, my sweat. Okay, it, I'm glad you clarified that. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a thing that can happen if yeah. you didn't know. Yeah. You can sweat in a shower. That's funny. It's like getting shot that when was, you wink. That was him. very, very random. It's very because, random. Well, I thought about it in the shower and I was like, I need to tell him that when he gets home. And then all of these other things happened. And then you mentioned sweating and it triggered the thought. Gotcha. So I just needed to know you to know that, that you can sweat in the shower. That you have that effect on okay. me. Yeah. Soul credit to you. <laughs> My response was. Good. With all the chaos we have recently been through between financial hardships, cancer scare with our two-year-old, the legal stuff with the daycare, multiple friends show their true colors by slamming my name into the mud. In all honesty, I am doing really good. All of our chaos lately has taught me that I am much stronger than I realize I am, and I do not need toxic people in my life. It is more than okay to walk away from friends who do not fit the vibe I am aiming for. Peace, patience, and positivity. Okay, say that again. Read that again. I Just in case you guys that. missed it. They don't have to go back and hit the 30-second thing. Just read that again for them. It is okay to walk away from friends who do not fit, fit the vibe I am aiming for. That's it, man. And that includes family. That does include family. That's why my circle is so small. Yep. I am very, very selective when it comes to my vibe. His response, do not quote me entirely on this because I know I will be forgetting something. I'm human. Well, I am quoting you directly because these are, this is your email. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't get shit on. <laughs> Exhausted. I have been sleeping well. I haven't been sleeping well between everything going on with our two-year-old in the daycare. Plus trying to re research things for investing in. That's smart though. Mm -hmm. Thinking of ideas to help us financially, battling with myself on being a good dad, provider, and husband. Side note to his response, he is doing amazing at being a dad, provider, and husband, even if he is struggling to see it. God, I hope you fucking told him that. God, I hope you told him that. She did. She said side note to his response. Oh, so it doesn't, she's just saying that. Right. Okay, I hope you did say that during the check-in. Because him saying that, that is what he needed to hear the most yep. in that moment. Yeah, you could have validated that and made him feel like a million bucks. I really hope she said it. Same. That would have changed his whole mental state. Right. Our next question. How is your mental health? My response right now, surprisingly, my mental health is much better than it has been in a while. I don't feel so overwhelmed and run down. Although I'm exhausted due to our little ones wanting to sleep in our bed. I am in a much better place mentally than I have been. 
While learning, com- while learning to communicate to you, I am also learning how to communicate with myself and to not overthink constantly. That's huge. That overthinking is hard to break. Yep. I am finding ways to prevent overcome. I am finding ways to prevent becoming overwhelmed. And when I do, I am figuring out how to process it and stop my anxiety before it gets bad. I used to let the kids sleep in bed with me. And I broke that habit probably about three months or I start, I tried to start breaking the habit probably about three months before we moved in together. Mm. And they're doing really well with sleeping in their own room. It, they used to get up multiple times at night to come and get us. And now it's maybe once while they're being here once a night, once a day and once that night. Yeah. So it went from being three to four times every single night to one night once a week. And the other night, our daughter was having multiple nightmares and I fell asleep on the floor in there. I would rather fall asleep on the floor in their bedroom than have them getting used to sleeping in the bed with us. Same. Yep, same. Not shitting on you for it. No, it's hard having your kids in there. Kicking kicking and turning, you can't move, you can't, you know what I mean? It makes your bed significantly smaller. It does. The extra body heat, that's the whole thing. So not shitting on parents who co-sleep. Just, yeah. It was something I did when they were younger, trying to break the habit now. I mean, the habit is broken, but every once in a while they have nightmares. Our son has a night terror. I don't want to get shit on in the comments. His response, my mental health is okay. I asked him to explain. Between being exhausted and not getting my mind to shut off, all the health stuff with our kids, the daycare stuff, financial things, I just feel like I can't catch a break. I know I am fixing to have to make a lot of changes with our oldest, the 18 year old, because the way things are going with him needs to change. And that is where our conversation paused because our lovely four and two year old strutted into our room and decided our bed was way better than theirs. (laughs) Called them little turkey butts. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. So again, not shitting on this person. This is a perfect moment where you can Make your your more your marriage your marriage a priority. Right, send them back to bed. Send them back to bed. Take ten or fifteen minutes. Get them back in bed. Get them comfortable, and then yeah. come back and continue the conversation. Yeah. Check ins like this are extremely important because you're both divulging everything that's going on in your mind right now that you might not know is going on otherwise. Right. I, I actually think, though, that because they just got into a very deep conversation, having the interruption is probably a slight reprieve Yeah. to let them level back out and get back into it. Because sometimes the emotion thing, mm-hmm. I can see how a check-in could become an emotional dump Yeah. where you go from feeling like a normal conversation to just word vomiting everything out. And then the emotion like aspect of it could become a thing and people can start crying, not because they're angry. It's just a lot. There's Yeah, right. Right. So that that interruption could have been a blessing in disguise. Yeah. It's happened with us in our check-ins. The phone will go off. I have to look at my watch. Yeah. Oh, somebody's texting about the shop. I hang on real quick. It's just that that quick breathing thing. Because, you know, I, yeah. I don't want to cry in front of you. Right. So in the event that I'm just overwhelmed or I'm having a hard time talking about something, because some, sometimes it doesn't have to be anything about anything. Mm-hmm. I can, I, I mean, I, I can cry to a commercial sometimes. Like it doesn't take much. Once that emotional nerve is hit, it's game on. Yeah. And I have to <laughs> until until that that quells down. So it, those those little reprieves are necessary sometimes. Not saying that it's not no. okay to cry in front of your partner, but you know, who yeah. the fuck wants to be a sobbing mess? Snot bubbles. It's just not pleasant. I agree with that. Yeah. The reprieve and taking a moment. So if you do take that moment. Remember to finish the conversation. Yes. Don't think that it's over because kids came in or mother-in-law called and there was something going on. Yeah. Like conversation doesn't need to continue. Yeah. You're basically just muting the arms of the angel commercial. Yeah. So you don't have to to hear that and (laughs) see that until it's over. Yeah. I kind of want to like. Fuck you, bro. (laughs) Because I am now realizing when we watched the Top Gun Maverick and I'm sitting over there crying, you were sitting over there holding back tears, but you're teasing me for crying. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> that was very random. <laughs> you looked over at me and you're like, you're crying. You're crying. <laughs> and I'm like, I was like, leave me alone. <laughs> I put up the blanket so he couldn't see me. And the whole time you're fighting tears. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Oh, man. Like, knowing now that was the situation, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I love that. <laughs> I love that was the situation. <laughs> when we... um, This is really random. Uh, really off topic, I, sh- I should say. Uh, when Sean and I went and saw I Am Legend, mm-hmm. we're, you know, both of us were... Oh, we're both very big men. Mm-hmm. He, he's much bigger than I am, but I, I was very big at the time. And we're in the back of this theater fucking sobbing when he had to put, like, kill his dog. And I look over and he's like, <laughs> and, and, I, and like, I realized he was crying, which made me cry harder. We're sitting back there just like ugly crying in the theater. <laughs> I, I don't do that. the animal thing. I, right. I just can't. I love that you guys shared that moment. It's funny. He brought it up the other day. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that you guys have that memory. That's so dope. It's dumb. It's fun. That's the kind of shit that you're like, I'm glad you're in my life. Yeah. <laughs> we Bitch. ugly cried in the back of the theater. Thanks for being here, homie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> There's no one else I would rather ugly cry with. Yeah, it's funny. So we shall continue our check-ins, and I will update as I can. I know things are fixing to become extremely crazy with all the legal stuff. However, this is a, also a good thing. All of this communication and self-growth, as well as growth as husband and wife, has become possible because we learned how to properly utilize the tools we had to better ourselves and our marriage. She said we're amazing teachers. (laughs) We we both look forward to learning more and more from y'all. You know, I don't I don't I, I know that like this is not our information. Like we didn't design any of this. This is from years of reading books and self-help and trying to implement things and find the things that we were able to make work for us and Mm -hmm. then explain it in a way that makes sense. That makes sense. Right. Because when you read something and it's, it's like, um, medical jargon or it's prim and proper. And I don't talk that way. If I got to stop, wait a minute and Google a word so that I understand what you're talking about. Like I need you to define that. It's a, a lot different than hearing it from somebody that talks like you do and lives like you do. So what we're doing is is really just translating shit that we've already learned and putting it in a way that other people are able to understand it a little bit better and making it so you don't have to read the books because not all those books are, are full of information. Some of them just have a gem in them. Yeah, that is very true. Some of them don't have any. Some of them don't make it past like the fourth or fifth chapter. I'm like, next. <laughs> I, I, I think that would qualify us as teachers. Yeah. Because teachers go to college to be taught to be teachers. They learn the information to pass on to others. I'm going to go with mentor or coach. Ooh, I like mentor. Yeah. I don't think I'm a teacher. I don't think I'm smart enough to be teaching anybody anything. I can give you advice. You can maybe utilize it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to be called a teacher. I, I so, respect okay. that that was a term that was used, but I don't, I don't think that I'm qualified for something like that. So. I'm the Home Depot of communication. Shut up. I, I got the tools. <laughs> You got to build that shit. <laughs> what is their logo? It's better here or some shit like that. I don't know. Now I got to look. But I love that you called yourself the Home Depot of knowledge or of tools, whatever you said. Because this is really random. I love the way Home Depot smells. Like I just love Home Depot in general. And I love the way you smell and I just love you in general. Just It's fitting in more than one way. So I think a uh, teacher does apply in this scenario. And I think that just because you don't want to be called a teacher and it makes you uncomfortable is why you don't like it. Not that it doesn't apply. Okay. I'll take that. How doers get more done. That's it's a slogan. Their slogan. That's their slogan. How doers get more done. So we're, we're I have never heard that. We're the Home Depot of communication. How, yeah. how talkers get more done. How, how, I don't know. I'm going to rip their shit. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a t shirt with their logo that's not their logo and, and totally make it look like a Home Depot shirt and we're gonna get sued for it. But I'm gonna do it anyways. Please don't. <laughs> I don't I don't wanna deal with that. <laughs> I, I don't want the ramifications of that. And instead of calling it the Home Depot, it'll be the home something else. He's still going. I am still going because we're it's a home improvement store. 
It is a home improvement store. We're giving communications to fix your fucking home. Like, we are we're giving you the homes. tools to improve your house, your household. Be the household depot. Oh no, now I'm on board. <laughs> the home hold depot. Okay. <laughs> I'm accepting the ramifications. Yeah, we just have to figure out how to do it with enough change to not get sued. You know that, that we there should was talk a, to our lawyer. Yeah, we should. We, we should probably stop talking about this now. <laughs> <laughs> It makes me feel better getting the warning out there that I'm going to be stupid. Yeah, me too. Okay. It is what it is. I don't judge. Also, you brought me that soda and I wanted to go, you're the best around and no one is ever going to bring you down. All right, let's get into the next one. Next one is called Hurricane to Healing. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, I am so glad that that was said. Okay. Do you realize that if it wasn't for Hurricane Ian, we wouldn't be doing this? AJ hit me with some shit this morning. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I'm going to read the quote. Okay. You go with that? Yeah. All right. Let me pull this up. I, I so wanted to talk to you about this. Talk about timing. I also learned that if you say the F word consistently throughout a, um, a podcast, mm-hmm. that it can demonetize you. So I'm trying hard again not to say the F word over and over and over again. Although oh, it's, no. yeah. Um, <sighs> it takes a lot of darkness of a storm to show us the light of God's presence. Right? He sent me that this morning. Stop. Yep. <clears throat> Stop. So, Hurricane Ian destroyed a lot for us. It did. And I'm, I'm going to, I went down a rabbit hole with him this morning over all of this. We lost two locations mm-hmm. completely. That building's still out of commission. It happened September 28th. It is March 10th, right? Is it the 10th? 10th. So, it's been six months. And we've supplemented our income. <clears throat> Right. Well, it gets it's a lot more than that. Right. So we lost those two buildings. Because we lost those two buildings, I had to put every one of my employees into one location, which means we lost our working area, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which made us come home. It did. Because I can live off the money my businesses make without actually having to work the business. Because we were home, we bought cameras and decided mm-hmm. to do photography as a hobby. And because we had so much free time, we started doing TikTok. Yeah. TikTok started blowing up and people started asking for a podcast. And because we had no reason to be at work anymore, the podcast became a thing. And we were able to dedicate full time hours, hours to the podcast while our work, our business still kept us afloat. Hurricane Ian, if it would not have done the damage it did to our businesses, this would not be a thing. This wouldn't exist at all. We've never even discussed having a podcast Mm -mm. until it was pushed on TikTok. Nope. And this has been three months in the making. This Monday that just passed was three months. Oh, my God. So we were a year into TikTok, but TikTok was not a thing for us. No, it wasn't. Until the hurricane, our TikTok was doing nothing. We mm. were both under 20,000 subscribers. We were just posting stupid shit. Yeah. And in six months, we went from under under 30,000 to 300 and 500,000. Yeah. And we're up to 18,000 subscribers on YouTube as of right now. 240 patrons. This whole thing has blown up in three months. We are doing numbers that most people don't see when they get into YouTube. It, I have chills. That's insane. We didn't lose our house. No. We got no flooding. We lost a single solar panel. And we had some tiles on our roof, some shingles get ripped off. Yeah. I'm pr- in the process of getting going back and forth with the insurance company to get the roof replaced. But we were able to build a home gym. Mm-hmm. We don't effectively have to leave our property at all. We DoorDash and Instacart when we need to. Um, but we have been able to dedicate a lot of time to this more than a normal person would be able to dedicate while working a job and trying to get their life going. Right. If it was not mm. for that hurricane, this, none of this would exist. Yeah. We would have stayed at work. Yep. That's crazy. Yep. And, and like with everything that happened yesterday mm. and all of the um, insight that we got yesterday, cause I really, I really shit's timed. It, it really is. Oh yeah. I don't believe for a second that everything that played out last night happened exactly the way that it was supposed to happen because three months ago when I bought those Wicked tickets, this didn't exist. No, it didn't. There was no podcast. There was no TikTok. Our TikTok, we were doing live streams here and there. Like, We were less than 100,000 subscribers three months ago. Totally. There was nothing there. And yesterday I had a a really bad day recording. Mm -hmm. I was super fucking aggressive to everyone that that sent us emails because of the stupid shit that they were saying. They don't do well with stupidity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I when I got those emails and you started reading them, I'm like, wait a minute, does this really you're you're gonna really send us an email and say that and then say this? Like there was right. a lot of that. And then we had the talk on the way up 
it started to change my 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 mental a little bit and then meeting uh amber last night changed my mental a lot more and then the drive home changed it a lot more and i woke up today renewed and then aj hit me with the whole storm thing and he was like you know blah 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 and i'm like oh my god here we go everything that you just played out from the hurricane happening to us doing this to buying the wicked tickets before this even became a thing mm-hmm. and then meeting our first fan yep last night at wicked I'm going to be honest. I have been really strongly. I would never give up the podcast, but I've been thinking about it. Yeah. Like the strain it is putting on me and the stress and the emotions and the frustration it causes us. Yeah. Like I, I've really been thinking like, is this worth it? And that whole scenario you just played out. Like, yeah. I can't explain the feeling I'm feeling right now, but it de- things are timed. Yeah. Things I, are definitely timed. I agree. I agree a hundred percent that everything is timed. Um, dude, we have so much going on behind the scenes that are like slowly becoming into fruition that were things that were joked about. Oh yeah. It, there's just a lot and, and, and everything that is happening did not, I never would have in a million years thought that any of this would have happened. Mm-mm. The idea of being seen somewhere, somebody being like, Hey, I love your videos or getting the emails like, Hey, my divorce just is not happening now. Hey, you guys fixed my marriage. Hey, I'm getting my business contractor's license. I'm reopening a business that I lost during COVID because of you guys. I'm getting my HVAC license. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And people are crediting us like this three months ago didn't exist. No, we were. I said in a TikTok the other day, I'm a nobody on the internet. That video, I think is up to like five or 600 comments on it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are like, how dare you call yourself a nobody? And that kind of hit me hard. Because I think that about people who have had an influence on me from the internet. Right. Like. Right. Well, there's people that we follow on TikTok that we fangirl over. Like oh when yeah. Pearly Things added you on, on TikTok and started following you back, you had a meltdown. Yeah. When conservative conservative aunt um, responded to one of my, my comments on his video and like came to one of our shops and got tattooed, I, I was like starstruck. Right. They're TikTokers. You yeah. know what I mean? And because now I'm in a position where I'm at that level, I'm like, they're just people. Right. Like, it's cool that they got a following, but I mean, they're just people. Yeah. And I get that now, but I didn't get it before. And I, I realized last night, too, that in the event that we're ever out in public and people stop us, I will never be an asshole to somebody. I was going to say that, the, too. The fact that people want to talk to us and like, as long as we're not with our kids, I will I will entertain anyone. Right. Don't sit in my booth. If you catch us out eating, don't sit down. Mm-hmm. That's rude. Definitely stop and say something. Though. Absolutely. Like, we'll stand up and take a picture yeah, with you. Yeah. And if you're being super cool, and maybe we will invite you to sit down. I, I don't know. We'll yeah. see how that plays out. But I will absolutely stand up and take a photo with you. Like, right. I, who am I? You know what I mean? I don't know. There's also a level of humility that's going to have to come into play in this and, and recognition that even though we are the, the face of this, that mm-hmm. it's not us that's doing this podcast. Right. So Patreon. We just got another patron. Second one in five minutes. Second one in five minutes. If you want to be the third one, go check out our Patreon. <laughs> Super dope over there. Like we always say, exclusive content, early release, live streams to interact with us and see my stupid faces when you guys say something funny. And now a Discord that's up to almost 100 people. You know, it's Friday, actually. So we'll be doing a live stream tonight at 8 o'clock on Discord. If you go subscribe now, you'll make it. Yeah. They won't see this until Monday. Dang. But You'll but make it for the next you'll, one. You'll make it for the next <laughs> one. <laughs> you can do next week. That 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 The Discord servers is pretty dope because we get to interact with people on like a real life scenario. I because love it. we've been posting it and like we are very active there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Patreon thing is wild to me because of the amount of people that are, are starting to invest in what we're doing. We are really building a community, like, and it's not just a, a people. Like, they're interactive. They're they're the people that are there mainly interact. Yeah, we're not even building the community. It's they you guys are. joining. Yep, and it, you guys are just growing, mm-hmm. and you guys are making it a community. Yep. I love being in the Discord. When I first downloaded it, like a few days ago, I was completely overwhelmed. But like, I'm kind of getting more used to it and more comfortable with messaging people. It's definitely a lot, a lot of things going on, and. Making sure I don't sound stupid when I say something. We actually need to get another two, I think two more people on on Discord to moderate. Okay. We have Craig and Jennifer as moderators. Mm -hmm. Uh, AJ's not on there yet, but I think that we need at least one or two more people. Okay. Also, go ahead. Before you keep going. So at night, when I'm awake at like one or two o'clock in the morning, I'll pop into the Discord and see what they're doing. And I've noticed a couple of people who are on there pretty regularly. So I I have a few people in mind we can make moderators. We can message them and see what they say. Okay. Yeah, we should do that. Um, Just message them on Discord. Yeah. The other thing that I was going to say, and this is purely to give recognition to somebody Mm -hmm. 
that's in the Discord and Patreon community. Uh, I just want to say what's up to Kylie. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like she needs to be seen. I appreciate her in the chat. Yep. Same. So that was all. I converse with her pretty regularly. Yeah, we there. both do. Yeah, we both do. She's super <laughs> active over there. Yeah, super sweet. Yep. That um that the the people there there are a handful of people over there that are like very very active. Mm-hmm. But we are learning so much about their lives. Oh yeah. And seeing the struggles of everyone because we have the I need help thing mm-hmm. in there for people to talk. We have a prayer section in there. There's a lot going on over there. There is. Um, having people be able to interact between each other when something's going on, even though we're not there. The, the advice is, is valid. Like mm-hmm. we're, it, it, I don't know. It's wild to me. And there's always somebody active in there. So if you have a scenario where you just need to be seen or heard or quick advice, like there's yeah. always somebody in there to respond. Yeah. I love the discord. Try not to get emotional. Oh yeah. It's hard. Some of the things that are said in that chat, I'm like, fuck man, I'm so sorry you're going through that. Like I wish I can give people hugs. Right. Yeah. Me too. The, 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 the emotional aspect for me though is not, it's not so much what they go through. It's the, the amount of support. Mm-hmm. Like when we sit down and do the premieres and people are doing like the super chats, I'm falling the fuck apart over here. Like it, it, it really, it's humbling. Like people are like, Oh my God, you guys X, Y, Z. And I'm like, I'm a fucking dumbass on the internet. I don't right. understand what is happening right now. People are tagging me in like dope life moments on that discord. And I genuinely get excited. Yeah, me too. Like I see that. I'm like, hell yeah. Like good for you. And yeah. I'm, it's great. I love it when people share things that make them happy. It genuinely makes me feel happy. It makes my life feel more complete knowing that there are other people living their best life. It's gangster. When I walked in this morning, I saw you in that live chat. There was $150 donated. I saw that I almost started crying. Yep. It's insane, isn't like, it? Like that's I'm gonna start crying. That's a lot of money for people. Mm-hmm. It's insane. It is absolutely insane. Okay, so into the email. Yeah. <laughs> Hurricane to healing. First, I want to start by saying thank you for taking the time to read this very long email. I admire the two of you and the content you are sharing with the world. I have always wanted this lifestyle, but I've never been able to articulate it as well as you do. For a little background, I am 31 female and I'm married to my 31 year old husband. We have been together since we were 17. Ooh, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. That is half their life. Yeah, half their life. And I've been married since we were 18. Both of us came from less than ideal situations. My parents were teenagers and I was passed through various family members before my mom officially got custody of me again at 13 years old. That sucks. Okay. I'm going to read this next sentence. And I'm, I'm noticing that there are a lot of younger people starting to follow us. Hear this next sentence because when you are young and your life is not together, you are going to affect that child. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of abuse physically, sexually, and mentally and neglect. And ultimately, I was kicked out two weeks after my uh, 18th birthday, to which I went to my husband's family's house. So she got every form of abuse there is. Yep. And it's because two teenagers had unprotected sex had a child. Now that child was passed around like a family heirloom and endured all of this terribleness because two people didn't think. That sucks. Yeah, well, it's because you're a teenager. You think you know everything. <clears throat> you think you know everything as a teenager. And, and you you know what I mean? Like, you can't be told shit. And when it comes right. to having a kid, people think that they, they... You think, oh, I've made it this far. Everything's great. Yeah. You don't realize how much your life is going to, ha- to change when a child comes into the picture. We mm-hmm. say this shit constantly. You know... And this can apply to people in their 20s. When I got pregnant with my son, I was living with his dad and his parents. So we didn't even have our own place yet. Right. And 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 I got pregnant. Yeah. Yep. Like looking back, that's absolutely unacceptable. It's insane when you really think about it. It is. And I didn't know any better. My childhood was not the best. My mom certainly did everything she could to provide a good life for us. I was placing a lot of... and I was placed in a lot of unideal, is that a word? Unideal mm-hmm. situations. I didn't have an example of what a stable, this is what you need to do. So I, I didn't even know what sex was until I was like 15 years old. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely think about your situation and where you are. And if 
you are able to actually accommodate a child. <clears throat> I got lucky. I want to say I got lucky. I mean, I definitely made choices to give them the life that they have now. If I wasn't who I am, my children could have a really, really rough upbringing. Right. Definitely think about your actions. My husband came from a very religious on the outside home. So when she says on the outside, she means like a facade. Yeah. Okay. His mom was my Sunday school teacher and introduced me to him. They turned out to be highly manipulative and emotionally abusive humans, though I didn't realize until after moving in. My husband was par parentified as he was expected to take care of his 400 pound plus mother while his father worked his butt off to provide and take care of literally every aspect of life. He was emotionally neglected and manipulated his entire life. It was a very hostile environment, though not physically abusive, so he had a hard time accepting that that was abuse. I said all of that to say neither of us were taught to how to regulate, communicate, or how to be a decent human. And we learned this very quickly. Our relationship was built on a rocky foundation, and I say that with 100% accountability. I love that. I initially came on very strong, but my only knowledge of love was sex. And when he refused to have sex with me at 15, I realized how shitty this is. I ran. I took that as a sign that he didn't love me and I bolted. I think that is a very common thing for teenage girls to correlate sex with love. I wouldn't know. Yeah. I'm not a girl. Well, dudes don't have an emotional attachment to sex or they can remove the emotional attachment right. from sex. So it's just an action for teenage girls. I had that mindset. If a man has sex with me, he loves me. And that's a very damaging mindset as well. And that's something that we need to work on as a fucking society. I need to stop dropping the F bomb so much. We need to work on that as a fudging society. You look uninterested. I'm just waiting. Yeah. There's, there's not a whole lot I can say in that. I, you know, so you want me to fast forward a little no, bit? No, I just want you to read it. I just, okay. I'm not going to chime in until I have a reason to. I took that as a sign that he didn't love me and I bolted and the, and there the Rocky foundation was built. Fast forward another two years and we, 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 we reconnected. R's and W's are hard for me. I told him I loved him first and initially it was met with, I love you too. And about a week later, he told me that he wasn't actually sure it was love. This made me pull back and run again. I took his honesty and almost weaponized it with a question mark. Do you think she weaponized that? How would, how would I know if she weaponized it? So she told him they reconnected and she said, I love you. Right. And he and said, I, I love, love you too. too. And he said, I don't know if it was actually love. So she took that and just ran away. Right. But how, how would that be weaponized? Like how there's nothing there that indicates weaponizing. I don't know. There's, she asked. There's a lot of things. Well, I mean, she put a question mark on it. Yeah. Right. But that's how the fuck am I supposed to know that? <laughs> I don't know what you did or didn't right. do. Did you throw it in his face? Did you fight with him over it? Like, I, I don't know. Just him, him being, there's a lot of accountability in this, which right. is why I'm not saying shit. Like they, she knows she's being like, this was wrong. This was wrong. I take accountability here. It was Rocky foundation. Da, da, da. Right. I don't, you know it. Like yeah. I, don't, I don't know what you even say there. But I also recognize that him being like, wait a minute, I said I love you too, but I'm not sure it's love. Like mm -hmm. if he was not just saying that to be an asshole and he was being genuine, that's a fucking strong thing. Like yeah. to be able to be that upfront and honest, knowing that you're going to hurt someone's feelings. There's right. an honesty in that. Mm -hmm. there, I, I respect the shit out of it. Yeah. I don't think running away is weaponizing. I mean, if you're hurt, you're hurt. Right. It's not, it's not weaponizing. Yeah. You're, you're recognizing you're hurt and you don't want to be in the situation. So being hurt's okay. Your fear response of running away because he rejected love, that's not weaponizing it. That's just a trauma response. Right. I think an, a, an example of weaponizing that would be he came to you, said, I know I said I love you. The more that I think about it, I'm, I'm not sure it's love. I, I don't know what I'm experiencing. And then you throw in his face, but you said you love me. Yeah. I, I don't understand. Why are you changing your mind? Right. And then you get aggressive about it. That could be viewed as weaponizing. Well, if you actually loved me. Right. Yeah. You've done all of this. It shows that you love me. Oh, that's manipulation. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you weaponize something, it's because you're trying to manipulate the situation right. anyways. I don't like the the buzzwords. Mm -hmm. Calling anything weaponized is because you can't, you don't know the proper vernacular to have a discussion like a normal human being. So you have to use buzzwords and meme talk to be able to have a conversation. Right. And if not that, at the very least, I was hurt and definitely playing victim. I was also 17. 
He ended up using another girl to make me jealous, and I basically begged him to come back. Oh, I do not miss being a teenager. Me either. <laughs> being a teenager sucks. Like, all of these emotions and pettiness and still being a child but trying to figure out love. Thinking you're an adult. Ugh. We have been together since. We got married at 18, and nine days later, he shipped out for basic training. We were separated for about five months with only two phone calls and a handful of written letters. We were reunited and spent five months together before he was deployed to Afghanistan. And we, had, we also had both found out we were pregnant with our first child. Our son was eight months when he got home from Afghanistan. So we ended up moving states, getting out of the army, and having three more kids. And so much more in a four-year time span. It was a lot of change in a very short amount of time, and a lot of it was hard, and neither of us knew how to cope. We would scream and yell, and at points it would become physical. It was all we ever knew. That's why it's important to go through your trauma and deal with it and figure out why do you yell? Why do you get so upset? It's Having, also why you build a foundation. It is. That, that is part of the foundation. That's why you build a foundation, because now you're trying to build a foundation on top of raising four children. Right. So on top of trying to keep your marriage alive, you're trying to keep four other souls alive. Yeah. That's a lot. You're making it harder on yourself is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't have to be that hard. If you do all of the hard work in the beginning, when you have kids, you're going to have a very happy family and you're going to put, you're going to put your best example forward of what a relationship and a family should look like for your children. So they don't repeat your mistakes. Ending generational trauma. That's exactly what it is. He has mostly been the breadwinner while I have tended to our children. I have owned a daycare for several years and worked little odd jobs to help provide when needed. But he has mostly made the money and I have cooked and cleaned and taken care of the kids. This be began creating a lot of resentment when our last child was born. My husband was the sole provider and I was home with four kids ages four, two at one and a half and a newborn. It became increasingly hard to keep up with the house on my own as he was working and going to school and not coming home much. Oh, and not home much. It did not leave a lot of time for him to help. I was not able to keep up with the house, and this created a lot of resentment on his end. What is resentment based on? Envy. So resentment's not the correct term. Right, bitterness would be the right, the right term. Okay. That, that whole thing, though, like, you had three kids... Mm -hmm. You were already struggling before you had that fourth. You shouldn't have had a fourth kid. Right. You should have let your kids got a little bit older, gotten your life to calm down a little bit before having that fourth child. Yeah. Uh, there's also conversations that could have been had and all of that, but that's a, a whole nother discussion. Mm -hmm. I was also coming out of postpartum depression and beginning a new career. They're doing a lot. They're yeah. doing a lot at once. So... You just had a newborn. You have four kids at home. You're beginning a new career. He's going to school. He's working full time. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. So she continued to use resentment, but I'm going to replace it with bitter. Okay. So as his, so as <sighs> bitterment is not a word. So the, the resentment that she has, like he had, doesn't make sense. If she had resentment towards him. Mm hmm it would make sense because he's getting away from the kids and living a life that she may want. Right. But it's, he's getting frustrated. The household duties are not being taken care of. Okay. That's not resentment. So we're going to use frustrated. Okay. As his frustration built, so did, as his frustration built, so did the distance. Of course. See, when you replace it with frustration, it makes more sense. Right. When you're frustrated, you're not going to want to be close with somebody. As his frustration built, so did the distance. He started withdrawing sexually and having angry outbursts. And I was catching him in little lies, like smoking at work when he told me he quit. Not big lies, but enough to make me doubt his word. You know, when, when you're in a relationship like that and that, that frustration and the distance begins and the small lies start, it's because they are not comfortable talking to you anymore or they don't just don't want to hear it. You're, there's there is a, a very big communication breakdown when you start lying to your partner about small things like that. Right, like smoking. Right. And I can understand, like, I, I wouldn't want to date a smoker. Right. I'm not a smoker. Mm -hmm. But in the event that something like that started happening, I can't control you. I right. can't make you not do that. 
It's definitely going to change things in the relationship. But, right. But putting you in a position where you can't just be honest with me and, and feel like you have to lie to me about it. That's a me problem. Mm hmm. I've done something in our communication breakdown with the way that I'm treating you for, for you to not just be like, yeah, I'm smoking. I can't stop you. Right. And no matter how I feel about it, me being an asshole and blowing up and arguing and screaming and, and doing all of that is not going to make you not smoke. Right. You're an adult. Mm -hmm. You can do what you want to do. I can plead and beg and ask and, and try to get you to quit. But if you are feeling frustrated towards me and you are not happy in the home and you're not happy with me because of the way that I'm treating you, why would you want to appease me? Right. When you when you can't tell your partner something like mm -hmm. if, if I got a new habit or if I started bourbon hunting again and like buying bottles and shit and I had to hide that from you, I'd have to be like, wait a minute, why, why am I fucking hiding this? Right. I'm a grown up. I have my own money. I have my own life. Mm -hmm. She's a part of it. If I can't just be like, hey, this makes me happy and I'm going to do it and we can't just have a normal conversation. That's a problem. Right. You don't have to like it. You don't mm -hmm. even have to accept it. You can be vehemently against it. And if this is something that I still want to do and I'm going to do it, why would I hide it from you? Right. Because now I'm adding a whole nother layer of issues on top of what we already have. Mm -hmm. When I can just be like, well, I'm sorry that you feel that way. This makes me happy. And for a little while, I'm going to do this. And when I find something else that makes me happy, I'll, I'll switch. You can't, you can't make someone not do something. You can't. You can only that hope that you are good enough to make them want to be good enough for you. Yeah. I'm going to take that deeper. <clears throat> So specifically on the smoking, from what I've heard from smokers, I've never smoked a cigarette. They are more likely to smoke when they're stressed or frustrated, mm -hmm. unhappy, depressed. So if he told you he's going to quit smoking and he hasn't quit smoking, not only does he not want to come to you and hear about you complaining that he's smoking, there's a reason he has continued to smoke. And it's because he's frustrated and stressed out and depressed. Right. It's deeper than him lying to you. He doesn't feel like he can come to you and just vent and feel seen and heard with his frustrations. So right. he's turning to smoking instead of coming to you. There's other things to factor in there too, though, with the smoking thing. Some people just don't want to quit. Some people right. genuinely enjoy smoking. Mm -hmm. when, when you smoke outside instead of in your house and you get to go outside and have a cigarette in silence, you're getting five to 10 minutes at a time where you just get away from everyone. So like for people who smoke at work, when they go out back to smoke and they're out there by themselves playing on their phone, it's quiet time. Yeah, They can be out there by themselves having a cigarette, just doing their own thing mm -hmm. before they have to go back into the chaos. For people who don't smoke, we just stay in the chaos. Very rarely do people like Jeff Graham go outside and sit on the picnic table and just watch their iPad or do what they're doing. I do. Right. But a lot of people don't do that. Right. I don't ever go sit outside. It's too fucking hot out there. I'm not sitting outside. Yeah. But for smokers, they don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. But that that time is just time for them to have a cigarette it does what it does to their brain and they get to decompress for a few minutes. It, it's a, it's a drug. Tobacco is actually sacred medicine. It like it's, it's a plant medicine, mm -hmm. um, but, but it's, with, it's and, been abused. Yeah. With the nicotine and right. stuff they put in formaldehyde. Yeah. yeah all the fillers. Did my point make sense? Was mm -hmm. that? Okay. I, I think that um, just because we're talking about it, I'm going to recommend uh, you guys read plant medicine by Michael Pollan. Is mm -hmm. it, I'm almost positive. That's the name of the book. Uh, it gets into psychedelics and psilocybin and things like that too, but they talk about the cigarette thing in depth. I have all of his books. How to Change Your Mind. This is Your Mind on Plants. He's got The Botany of Desire Cooked. He's got, dude, he's got all, all kinds of books. All of his stuff is based off of, of plant medicine. He's got a book on caffeine. Damn, I didn't realize he had so many. This is This is Your Mind on Plants. Gets really heavily into all of the the plant medicine that can affect your brain and tobacco is sacred medicine. It's a big thing. Yeah. So anyways, back into the email. Another thing I want to touch on those little lies will 100% make your partner doubt your word. Absolutely. Everything, everything oh, yeah. that you say, not even questioning if you're actually going to be going out to dinner with your parents, you say you're going to get something done. They're not going to believe you. Right. They already have a backup plan. You tell them that you, they, you tell them that you think they're beautiful does he really mean that? Right. Yeah, you put a whole lot a oh, whole yeah. lot of things in doubt when you start doing those small bullshit lies. And that goes to women. That applies for women, too. If you tell your man that you start doing little white lies, not only is he going to question, is she actually going to brunch with her friends? Who's she talking to online? Right. Who's yeah. she talking to online? Is she still talking to that dude that we, just, that we agreed she's not going to talk to anymore? Yeah. Being brutally honest may hurt your partner. It's always worth it, though. But they know you're telling the truth mm -hmm. because you've never been afraid of hurting their feelings. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're not going to... 
people's feelings are going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. It's just all there is to that. It's not a you thing. That's a them thing. You can't control their feelings. And if you say some some mean shit and you're intentionally being malicious, that's a problem. It is. Sorry about the interruption. (laughs) But I just hit 500,000 subscribers on TikTok. 500,000. There is half of a million people following me on a social media platform. Yeah. That is fucking insane. That's crazy. Half a million. Yeah. I don't know what to do. <laughs> what do I do with my hands? Yeah, right. Should I be like, should I say thank you? <laughs> should I applaud? I, I don't I don't know. I, I don't fucking know. Like Yeah. I'm blown away. That's crazy. That's a lot of people. Talking about TikTok. If you want to check our TikTok yeah. out. <laughs> he is. You changed your handle. I am to be better podcast. And I'm inked underscore goddess 19. 13. 13. 19 inked. is your backup. Inked underscore goddess 13. I created both of these accounts too. And I can't remember. How wild is that? Holy crap. And we and I pulled this away from that email to check because I knew I was getting close. Yeah. And I don't even remember where we were in the email or what we were discussing. I, I am flabbergasted. So could, could you imagine? Holy dude, I got goosebumps right now. My, yeah. Not going to lie, same though. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Half a million. Half a million people. Okay. So now that those are back to normal. I can't Still wait have to. Still goosebumps though. Yeah. Can you imagine if that was YouTube? Oh, that would be. That's life changing. You know what we should do? Huh? Dude, I have so much going on right now. That I, I, that was, okay. Oh. That was the Airbnb people just emailing me back. I gave them my personal email so that it's not blowing up our shit so that I have that. Oh, okay. Um, Unreal. Unreal. You know we need to do something. Like, obviously not for TikTok. That's super dope. But like YouTube, if our YouTube channel hits like 100,000 subscribers, we need to do something wild. Yeah. And if we ever get to the point where we get to like 500,000 or even a million on YouTube, we should really go overboard. We should do a meet and greet. I was just thinking that for like 100,000, we should pick a random person and fly them to Florida and just do like a, you get to go to Universal Studios for a weekend. Oh, thank God. I'm not looking to spend no. three days with somebody. No, I'm not trying to do that either. <laughs> but like pay for a trip for somebody yeah. or, you know what I mean? Or, you or know like, it wouldn't be one person though. They'd be like can my best friend Sammy come? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we could figure that out. I mean, if if we had 100,000 subscribers on YouTube and it's yeah. making the money that that it's doing right now mm-hmm. times 80,000 people cuz we are almost to 20,000 subscribers. Right. I could absolutely pay for somebody to go to a weekend on YouTube money. Yeah. To go somewhere. That'd be crazy. We need to, we need to like really sit down and like get this vision board set up and oh, figure yeah. that out because I I do want to give back. Mm-hmm. And like there's so much I'm not even getting into it. There's so much. My brain is a thousand miles a minute right now. For a million followers, I would want to take like 10 people and we can all go somewhere for a day. I would want to go. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. If, we would if, go. If we, if, we got, if we hit a million subscribers, I'm, I'm, I'm like picking five or 10 people and we're going to Vegas for a weekend. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Put everybody up in the Aria or the Cosmopolitan and just do like a weekend in Vegas. All expenses paid. Yeah. Gangster shit. If you think you have fun watching the podcast. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> the shenanigans. Could you imagine, could you imagine if we were able to get like, and this is obviously not anything to do with that, but if mm-hmm. we could get in discord, if we hit Patreon, hit like 5,000 people, right? And then out of the 5,000 people, let's say there was 40 photographers in that group mm-hmm. and we were able to do a. 5,000 patron giveaway. We're going to go take pictures in Antelope Canyon. Mm -hmm. And all of the photographers and Patreon could get paid to go to Antelope Canyon and take pictures together. That'd be crazy. How gangster that would be. Like, that'd be dope. We're, dude. So many things. (laughs) 500,000. Half a million people are following me on TikTok. Yeah. What is happening right now? It's a lot. Ow. (laughs) (laughs) It's real. Yeah. What? She also had some Dunkin' Donuts. I did. While we were on that break. 
Yeah. And uh, the Duncan box is probably going to be in the frame of the third camera. More than likely. But for those of you who want to see her actually face fucking a donut, go to our Instagram page to be better podcast. She's just full on got all the guilt. Oh, no. Did you get me while I was yes. to stop? Yeah. And then you moved it. Today is the the last day that we get to eat like shit. Because tomorrow we go back full fledged on the diet. I'm not looking forward to it. We're also going to start doing cardio. Yes, again. we are. I, I am looking forward to the cardio. I am excited about the cardio, the diet. The more we discuss this, and, and the, now that, oh man, dude, we're so close. Everything is just unwinding for us. I really think that we should look into doing the Red Room as a podcast room. I can't believe you've done this to me. <laughs> <laughs> My hair looks great, though. <laughs> you look great. You got a snack holding a snack in it. And it's like snack inception over there. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that same feeling you just got with the 500,000, that's what's happening right now. Yeah. You gotta, yeah. Oh, well, you got a cover on them, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's good. Because mine were not covered. No. No, I had full on glass cutters. It's less than appropriate. Yeah. With you. <laughs> All right. Let's get back to the okay. email. I am I am beside myself. <laughs> I can't wait to hit five hundred thousand on mine. I'm elated. Yeah. Elated. Elated. Everybody go follow her. Inked goddess thirteen. Ink underscore, underscore goddess thirteen. Stop it. <laughs> no, they'll keep going. Get her get her to five hundred thousand. I'm using the mental telepathy right now. I'm I'm doing the If my account gets Xavier Roberts. If my account gets to 500,000 followers, can we do a giveaway? Dr. Xavier. Like a little giveaway. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Send out some stickers or something. Do like a little handwritten something. Yeah. Send out a card or something. I don't know. We'll Give you a drawing. Something. Let's get back to the email. Get to the email. <clears throat> Unreal. I have no idea where we're at, so I'm just picking up. Okay, well, yeah, that works. And then the big hit came. While having a conversation about our dying sex life, he told me that he was sexually attracted to my best friend, whom was like family and around at least twice a week and also married. That's fucked up. This led him to asking to be swingers. So was he hoping to be swingers to have sex with your best friend? That's what it sounds like. Because that's a very ill thought process because she's married. Right. Well, I mean, the married couple could be swingers. Right. That's not the way to do that. So what is the way? How, how do you do that? then? Um, <laughs> so if you want to be swingers, you should test the waters of that first. You shouldn't say, I'm attracted to your best friend. I know we're not having sex, but your friend's hot. Can we be swingers? <laughs> what? <laughs> you so so you're, you're saying that just simply asking to bang the best friend is not acceptable behavior? Unacceptable. Okay. Now, I, uh, it depends on the relationship, though. Like that person could be open to it, but you don't know that yet if you haven't had the conversation. So are you willing to offend the person you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with with saying, hey, your best friend's hot. Let's be swingers. Yeah. You should say, so I've been thinking about it and I think it might be exciting. Do you want to try something new? Maybe like swing a little bit. Get some pineapples going on. That's the thing I learned on TikTok. Yeah. Pineapples are related to swingers. And now I can never buy pineapple at the store because I don't want to put out false hope. <laughs> <laughs> That was stupid. I know you have to have the pineapple upside down. At that point, that's just being mean if I do that as a joke. That's fishing. So now I feel really bad that I just made a bunch of jokes about stringer swingers. I'm sorry. I'm nervous now because the next sentence is this broke me. So I am sorry. <laughs> right. Okay. So let I actually do want to talk about this a little bit. The, yeah. the idea that you can go from a monogamous committed relationship where both people have boundaries set and understood. Mm-hmm to going into a polyamorous thing is never going to be an easy conversation. No, it's and not. A lot of the time it might not even work out. Right. And in you getting to that point, if somebody brings that to you, there's a whole lot of things that need to be addressed. A lot. Is it that you're not getting an, enough attention? Is it that you're not, not doing your job as a wife? Not Are you doing not your job satisfied? as a husband? Are your emotional needs not being met? When was the last time you felt real intimacy? Like there's a whole lot of things that are happening there. Those things need to be explored way before you actually try to bring somebody else into your relationship unless you're both okay with it. it now, if you're both okay with uh, the poly thing and that's what you want to do, that's a conversation that's had way before you're married. Mm -hmm. um, before you continue, I'm also going to jump in and add to that list kinks. If you are not comfortable divulging kinks to your partner and that's why you want to have an open relationship, it's also a problem. There's, there's a whole lot of problem in that. Yeah your partner should be the one person that you should feel the most comfortable talking to. Mm -hmm. And in the event that you don't have the 
emotional safety to divulge all of you to your partner, that's a, a, a huge problem. It is. That, that is a, that, that is so much more than mm-hmm. everything else. Like, you, yeah. you know, those kind of things should be, who, who are you going to tell that to? You know what I mean? Like your partner is supposed to be the all understanding. And even though they don't agree with you, they shouldn't, shouldn't shun you for it. Yeah. You shouldn't be, should just be like, look, I'm, you know, that's cool that you're into it. I'm just not into that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and you can have those conversations. And, and if, if those needs need to be explored elsewhere, that's a conversation that's had later down the road, but you need to explain those things. In that scenario, I'm wondering if he's already talked to the best friend and then tried to play that game. Mm-mm. I mean, it's a possibility. It is a, it's a very strong possibility. My mm-mm is I would lose my mind. Yeah. Because you do not discuss the possibility of something happening outside of a relationship before discussing with me about the possibility right. of something happening outside of our relationship. <clears throat> I also don't think that that should be friendship circles. No. Like in the event that they actually did want to do that, it should be with random people, mm-hmm. not somebody that's in, prevalent in your life. Because once that happens and that person's around every time, if one person is not okay with it, like they thought they were going to be, it's going to create a whole lot of turmoil. Yeah. It's a very slippery slope. I've seen like 20 year friendships end because they thought that they would be okay with like a threesome or yeah. whatever going and on. They're not. Mm-mm. Yep. I've seen people cut their people, cut people out of their lives quick. Yeah. I've seen it destroy marriages. And then I was about to say, even the relationships fail after that. So you're losing everybody in your life. Yep. And that just goes to show how important sex is mm-hmm. to a relationship. When your intimacy is gone and your sex is gone. And I, I worded it that way intentionally because it's not the same thing. Your intimacy fails. Your sex life will fail. Mm-hmm. When those two things are gone and you are able to to make that up from someone else, you're getting the one thing that you should be getting from your partner from someone else. Everything else in your life you can get by on your own. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're not getting those important needs met, you're probably not going to stick around much longer. It's a very real, real scenario. It is. And this <clears> just <throat> ties back into don't enter in a monogamous relationship Without divulging, hey, in the future, if things get stale, how would you feel about maybe a threesome? Right. We actually or had... becoming... We did. Yeah. We had those discussions at length. And <laughs> those discussions changed the more serious we got. They did. Well, <clears throat> they did. They absolutely did. Mm-hmm. Um, but we changed the right. more those... Dis- okay. Uh, can we talk about that? Are you okay with that? I'm can okay I- with talking right. about that. So when we first when we first got into this, we we very much talked about in the event that we were together for fifteen years and our sex life faded, about bringing somebody else in to spice things up. Mm-hmm. We were not even serious at that no. point. And then as we got more serious, those conversations went from well, we could bring somebody else in to that not being off the table. But or and if it gets to the point that our our sex starts to change and and we're not being satisfied, we need to have the discussions first and figure out why and try to resolve it. Mm -hmm. And that would be a very last ditch effort to save our sex life. Right. Um, I know that where I am now mentally with what we have, I'm not saying that that could never happen, but I don't see that happening. I agree with that. Because in the event that I want something or need something emotionally intimately or sexually you've provided all of it Mm -hmm. there's never been a time where you've been like we're not doing that not once try anything once right and there's not been a time where you were like we're not doing that again Mm -hmm. so like we have a very open communication and there's no shunning yeah you know what i mean like (laughs) this is gonna sound so stupid this is gonna sound really bad i may have to cut it because i don't even know if i can go this go on on youtube um no i'm not even saying that because it's that bad well now i'm curious I, i can't just cut it I'm not saying do it, but it's implied. (laughs) (laughs) Man. Anyways. No, I I agree, though. When we first had those conversations, I was okay with it. Right. I was on board. Now with how things are and the way that I view our marriage with my with my religion and my faith. I am also saying it's not off the board, but I am more inclined to say no because I am worried it's going to ruin our foundation. Right. Well, our relationship has grown a lot since those conversations. And and because of the religious aspect, like I, I don't think that I would want to do that. Yeah. I have to be honest. The idea of even talking to another person in that aspect right now makes me uncomfortable thinking about it. I agree with that. Because I don't want... This is, this is, this is so much. I believe God put you in my life. Mm-hmm. I, I've said it over and over and over again. Like, you are here because he's like, this is where you need to be. He needs you or I need you or you need me or whatever it is, but this is where you need to go. And you did. And then storm hit and all the miracles that happened through the hurricane. And then all of the other things that have gone on since, you know, all of this, 
I'm not, I'm not trying to test God. Like right. you got it, bro. Like the, I'm, I'm just along for the ride, brother. You do what you got to do. I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. So the idea of lusting or entertaining another person so much so that when we met Amber last night and we went to take her picture because we were so excited, we didn't position ourselves in the photo. Right. I put my arm behind my back. So yeah. it looks like my arm is around her. My arm was completely tucked behind me. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to do anything that's going to be disrespectful to you, to me or God. Like I'm good. Right. So those conversations, even though we had them in the beginning, I don't think that that's going to ever be a discussion. I agree with that. I I, I don't know. I would go to a, a sex therapist or a counselor or something before we had those conversations now. But that, but, but those conversations were very real and were, were very on the table in the beginning of this, but because we've grown and we've changed, we have both changed. We have. Now, in the event that one of us falls out of our faith or our relationship starts to fall apart or our marriage is falling apart and and one of us is feeling the way that we're feeling, I would hope that that conversation would still be had mm-hmm. instead of infidelity behind the back. Right. And I'm okay with it. Like in the event that I'm not doing what I need to be doing as your husband, I would rather you tell me like, hey, you're falling short. I'm not getting what I need from you. I need you to step up. I would rather be hurt. And have to process that and step my game up or at least be given the fucking choice. You know what I mean? Given the chance. Right. You know. That's a lot. It is a lot. And us discussing that whole thing and the way that we changed, it can also change the other way. Yeah. If you start off monogamous and then later on down the line, you both agree like, hey, this is something that we want to try to implement. Have those discussions in the beginning, but first. Yeah. And if that person is totally off the table, like... No, that's not something I would ever consider even 20 years into a relationship. You now know 20 years into the relationship, that person is not going to be like, oh, yeah, let's be swingers. Mm -hmm. So you can't bring that to that person and say, hey, let's try this because our sex life is dead. Right. Your only option is to reignite the flame of your intimacy to get back into your sex life with your partner. That's your option. Right. Or you can leave. Yeah. Or, Or just not have sex ever again. That's it. Yeah. Yep. It's a lot when you really think about it. It is. I love you. (laughs) <laughs> I love you too. That was very random. I just. Why? Tell me why. Because that's something I've actually been thinking about a lot. That conversation where we had like later on down the line, would we ever have a threesome? And we were on board with it. Mm. And lately I've been thinking like on that topic, I'm like, I'm not okay with it anymore. Yeah. That's not something that I am actively willing to do to try and save our marriage or relationship or sex life, whatever needs to be done. I would rather exhaust every other revenue before we get to that point. And even once we get to that point, I feel like I would be accepting that just to make sure that you're happy. Right. Which is the wrong reason. It is. And even then, it's still just going to make the relationship fall apart. Because then there's going to be a whole lot of bitterness and hate and hurt. Right. Yeah. It's just not okay. So... Now I think it's just completely off the table for me. Yeah. I would still be willing to have that discussion with you if you came to me and said, I feel like we need to do this. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm hearing what you, what you want. What can I do before we get to that point? What can I do before you actively feel like you need to find somebody to bring in for us? Yeah. Yeah. That's also in the event that that conversation ever happens for anyone, Mm -hmm. it's going to be a hurtful conversation. It really is. Somebody's going to have their, their heart ripped out. Yeah. But the conversation needs to be had. Yeah. Yep. And, it, you know, it shouldn't even get to the point to where you already have the person picked out that you want to sleep with. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, that I mean, at that point, there's a whole lot of lusting and infidelity. Already that's already cheating. In my opinion. In my, right. That's already cheating, in my opinion. Yep. If you start to wonder, like, what would it be like to bring a third person and you need to talk to your partner? Yeah. If you start feeling like you want to start thinking about seeking out other people to satisfy your needs, you need to start looking at your partner and saying, OK, we need to fix this. Yes. If you've already picked out somebody that you want to satiate your needs or you're fantasizing about a specific person in your life that you know personally. Or you're talking to them already. Mm -mm. Yeah. This broke me. I threw myself into my career, my kids, and fixing myself, but I put up a wall with him. I lost 80 pounds the next year. I advanced in my career, career and became busy with work. And eventually I told him it was okay to be swingers. We were not having sex often and things were very in the roommate phase. In the back of my mind, if I gave him his way, then he wouldn't leave me. I realize how stupid now. I realize how stupid that sounds now. We got a new Patreon. Oh, Patreon. We've got to be pushing 250 now. Oh, yeah, definitely. Guys, I, I can't I can't, I can't even begin to tell you how humbling that is. Every time that happens, I'm like, what is happening right now? Oh, yeah. Every time I see one, and it's almost every single time it's $15 on the top, yeah. top tier. 
every time I see that, I'm like, shut up. Like people are giving up like McDonald's to pay yeah. for our Patreon. Yeah, people have Starbucks. canceled Netflix to pay for our Patreon. They've, so, so insane. They've removed other Patreons that they were following yeah. Yeah, we've to follow our Patreon. That's so crazy. Wild. Oh, what is happening? The only way I can describe this feeling is that I honestly feel blessed. Yeah. That's like every time. Yep. I've, uh, and I, my tattoo apprenticeship, that's always been a dream of mine is to be a tattoo artist. Right. But even as a child, before I said I wanted to be a tattoo artist, I would always say, I just want to help people. I want to make people happy. And I really, I'm going to start getting emotional. I wasn't expecting this. I really feel like that's what we're doing with the podcast. I do too. And it's just, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm fulfilling whatever prophecy there is for my life with this. <laughs> Uh, it's funny. just it's dope like i'm almost i'm really considering just going through my tattoo apprenticeship finishing it and then just walking away from it right well i mean the apprenticeship can happen whenever you want it to right realistically you could just not do the apprenticeship if that's really what you wanted until you were ready to i'm thinking about it yeah. like i real, i want to give this my undivided attention we have been and i it, know and it's becoming successful because of it and going back into the tattoo apprenticeship i'd be at work four days a week mm-hmm when I'm home, I'm focusing on drawings. I have to do flash. If I book appointments, I have to work on appointments. That would take a lot of time away from the podcast. And right. with how this is helping people, I don't want them to feel like I'm neglecting them, right. if that makes sense. And I understand people are like, no, it's not neglect. Like, uh, you're not neglecting us. Go follow your dreams. But like, I think my dreams are changing. Yeah. And that's normal. That happens. It's crazy. You, you go through phases in life. Yeah. I, I lived ate and breathed the body art community for a very long time in my life. Mm -hmm. And I don't really speak to anyone in it anymore. Yeah. So like that, that was a, that was part of my existence. Like I, it was part of my identity Yeah. and it's not anymore. Like I still have a whole lot of love for that industry, but what it was when I was infatuated with it has changed so much that it's not a thing for me anymore. It's not the same industry anymore. No, it's absolutely not, but it's really not. All right, let's go. I done fangirling over Patreon. Yeah. In the back of my mind, if I gave him his way, then he wouldn't leave me. This led to a two-year stint where we had an open marriage and we slept with other people. He had a very, all caps, hard time coping as he realized I was wanted by many and he was not. That's how that works. That is exactly how that works. Men, you need to understand if you are thinking about going to your woman and asking for an open marriage, you are going to have to accept the fact that she is going to be wanted by far more many men than you're going to be wanted by women. Mm -hmm. A thousandfold. A woman can go to a bar and leave with a man every night. Oh, yeah. A man can go to the bar every night and leave with a woman maybe once a week. Yep. It's not the same. So you think that you're going to have this hall pass and go and have sex with all these different women. And you think that she's going to be at home and have dinner ready for you when you get back. That's mm -hmm. not going to be the case. She's no. going to have far more dates than you. She's going to have far more men in her DMs. And you asked for this. Yep. And do that shit to yourself. So when you're going to ask for an open marriage or an open relationship, you're going to have to accept the fact that your woman's going to be desired. Yep. All right. This created even more resentment on his end. That is the proper word to use in that moment, yeah. resentment, yep. because he is envious of the fact that, girl, you are getting it and nobody wants him. <laughs> Why you got to be so enthusiastic about it? <laughs> because I'm salty at the fact that he was like, your best friend's hot. Let's swing. That's funny. You're getting what you're asking for, buddy. That's exactly how I'd react in that situation. If I were in this relationship and after two years, I was like, OK, you wanted to be swingers. We can be swingers. And after two weeks, you're like, I can't believe so many men are hitting you up and I haven't gone on a single date. But this is what you wanted, babe. You said you wanted the open relationship. I'm just, I'm trying to make you happy. Out of here with that salty ass pretzel. You want to do Auntie Anne's? <laughs> if it was a scenario where we discussed where they went to each other and are like, hey... How would you feel about having an open marriage? And they have an in-depth conversation about it and they hear each other's feelings. I wouldn't be as get bent but because of the way he approached it. And now he's salty about the fact that he got what he wanted. It's goofy to me. Yeah. You goofy man. You can tell you're enjoying it though with that big shit and grin on your face. I am. I'm having fun. It's 
sometimes you think you know what you want and then you get what you want and you're like, ooh, I didn't want that. <laughs> this created even more resentment on his end and there was never a moment of peace. He punched holes in the walls, emotionally manipulated me, and would even blackmail me to get his way or keep me from doing things he had previously done with someone else. I eventually broke and demanded couples counseling, and thankfully he was willing. So we really started diving into, our, into healing our relationship. We closed our marriage and was able to regain some of the trust that was originally broken. Good. That was two and a half years ago, and now we are in such a weird <clears throat> place. Ooh, that's not what I expected. I mean, I'm glad that you guys were on board with going to counseling and that you closed the marriage. Now he knows that that's not going to be a thing in the future. I don't want to get into it right now, but I want to talk about the whole, whole punching. I was just getting ready we, to we touch on that. We can do that at the end of the email. Okay. That was literally going to be the next thing out of my mouth. Because I want to have a discussion about we that. We are so just... I don't know why, but I just had the thought of, like, we're just so on the same level. I want to lick your brain. Ew. Yeah. Ew. I know. It's like brain snot in there. Right. Ugh. There's that mucus and stuff. It was an intrusive thought. That was... I'm judging your weird kink right now. It's not <laughs> a kink. It was supposed to be, like, a weird affectionate moment. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely weird. It's not a kink. <laughs> Because you would have to open my head for that. No. I'm not okay with this. I'm not saying I want You're to. You're trying to go in through my ear? Like, how, how would you get there? I mean, you keep your ears fairly clean. Fairly clean. I try. They do look nice. I get a really good view of them while we're driving. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Brain liquor. <laughs> What are you smirking at? <laughs> because I say stupid shit and people are going to be like, oh my God, I've never related so much to a sentence. And then they're going to validate me. <laughs> people are going to understand what I just yeah, said. <laughs> I know they are. I know they are. Brian the Buffalo is proof of that. Which is crazy. I feel so much support. It's great. We are both healing, though not healed completely. I have done a significant amount of inner work and therapy to heal my childhood trauma and really learn to communicate effectively. I am still a work in progress, and but that's my hang-up. Ooh, girl, why is that your hang-up? Everyone's a constant work in progress. Keep reading. Let's see. I am 100% committed to continuing to grow as a human and as a wife. My husband has had tremendous growth as well. I don't want to discredit that. I feel physically safe now for the first time in our marriage. I now know that I can leave without manipulation and blackmail, but he seems to have stopped his growth there. He thinks that because I know he will not hit me or take my car if I try to leave, he doesn't understand that there is so much more to making this work. I still am, I still am unable to express my emotional needs and have them acknowledged. <clears throat> I guess for a better lack of words here, he lacks emotional intelligence. When he has an emotion, it is still my fault. Something I have done. When he has an emotion, it is still my fault. Something I have done bad. He is still very unaware of his own emotions, but he is a hyper aware of mine. The other day I asked, what is the one thing I could do that will make you leave? And his response was, there isn't anything. This blew my mind and I told him that I really wish he knew his worth and was set boundaries because he deserved them. I am begging him to be bold, to set boundaries, to work on his emotional depth and awareness, but he literally cannot see his own actions and instead focuses on mine. If I ever have a concern, I end up consoling him because I have, I have made him feel like shit for expressing it. And this is beginning to affect my level of desire for him. I'm exhausted. I, I, I can't, I, I can't imagine why. Right. I mean, really, you, if you come to somebody with a problem, mm -hmm. anyone, if you come to them with a problem and you are trying to resolve something that you're feeling and at, in the end of that conversation, you are trying to console them, it's a problem. There, There is an issue there, whether it's emotional maturity or manipulation or whatever the problem is. If you have something going on and you cannot come to your partner and get them to fucking hear what's going on, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes you're not just be like, listen, I know that you're going to get upset when I say this and you can be upset, but I just need you to listen to me and, and make this about me. And then when, when we're done talking about me and I know that I'm heard, we can have a discussion about how you feel. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe that needs to be the scenario, but that's not okay. You don't do that shit to people. I was in a relationship where I caught him cheating. And when I was sending him the screenshots, he came home and he just started crying. He was like, I feel like such a piece of shit. I told you I'm worthless. You deserve better. That's a manipulation tactic. Yeah. You should have been like, you're right. I'll see you later. Yeah. But that was a situation where I ended up consoling him. Right. Instead of having it resolved as to why are you cheating on me? No. Nope. You're right. You, I wasn't you were, loving. You were absolutely right. I should have listened. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. I got to go. Some things he hit me with after I confronted him about the cheating was um, I never experienced love as a child. I crave physical attention because it was <clears throat> I was deprived of it in my childhood. All of these things. And he was looking for sympathy because I had a shitty childhood. This is why I am how I am. I can't believe I've hurt you again. Yeah. Yep. I would break whoever that was. Well, I mean, not not them, but like if I was in that scenario and somebody did that to me, I would I would destroy their mindset. Oh, yeah. I, I would absolutely validate every feeling that they're having in the moment and I would pack my shit and leave and they would end up mentally destroyed over that. Oh, yeah. A little mental reset. Oh, no. It, yeah. Reset in that like mm-hmm. what we were talking about on the Patreon reset. Yeah. yeah that kind of reset. Yep. Absolutely. I'm not saying it's right. Sometimes it's necessary. Oh, yeah. And this is beginning to affect my level of desire for him. I'm exhausted. I love this man dearly. And I see how much growth he has put into being a better dad to, bro- to provide a safe space in our home to help parent and heal our children. And I can see how loving he can be. I guess I am, I guess I am just asking for advice on how to handle the moments of emotional immaturity or how to approach him in a way that isn't just like, bro, I need more than f- physical safety and money in a marriage. I want to laugh with him again. I want to play with him again. I want to walk into a room and I want to rip his clothes off. I want to tell him how I feel and feel validated. How do I show him that I appreciate his growth this far? And I want to continue that momentum forward so we can continue to grow. He says he is willing to work on it and he has shown some improvement, but emotional awareness, awareness, depth, and intelligence always seems to trigger him. Okay, so you just said that he is shown improvement on these things yeah. so he's working on it yeah just it's just not to her pace right i would recommend the check-ins first and foremost it was ice maker okay always do the check-ins first once the check-ins are figured out and you've you've implemented that and mm-hmm. you have that open form of communication then you can hit him with in the check-ins that you're not being emotionally validated in the moment yeah. you also need to explain to him the difference between physical safety and emotional safety just because you feel physically safe and knowing that he's not going to beat the shit out of you or that somebody's going to get laid the fuck out if they run in your home mm-hmm. is very different than you being able to know that you can communicate with them. Right. Um, <clears throat> you guys don't realize how much your emotional mind affects your day-to-day life, your subconsciousness. Like mm-hmm. that, There's a lot to that. So that needs to be a discussion. And you need to be able to tell him in the moment, I don't need you to fix this. I need you to hear me. Yep. I, I need, need you to validate me. Right. I need to vent. I need you to sympathize with me. I need validation. I need you to just hear me. Mm-hmm. I need you to understand. There's a whole lot of ways that you can word that, but it needs to be about you. And they need to just know that. Yeah. It's okay to just not talk. It, it's fine. You know yeah. what I mean? So in that scenario where you need to be validated and you need to have your point heard and you say, I just need you to hear me right now. I'm not going to say shit. Mm-hmm. And in the event that I'm hurt or I get upset about it, I'm going to wait until we're calm again and be like, hey, the other day you said blah, blah, blah. That kind of fucked me up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about that for a minute? And then if I need to have a conversation about that, about why I felt that way, or if it was something I did or whatever the case was, we can then discuss that. <clears throat> but doing that shit in the moment when somebody's trying to get resolution to what they are going through having your conversation on top of that is muddy in the waters and nobody's ever going to feel heard right in that situation where he makes it about him and it's no longer about what you're trying to solve in the relationship and you're just consoling him i wouldn't i wouldn't console him right i wouldn't either i would say i acknowledge you're upset right now we need to resolve this and then we can talk about how you feel In regards to the emotional awareness stuff and intelligence always seems to trigger him, you are challenging him to change his whole thought process. Right. He uh, is, what, 31 years old? Been together since you were 17. You guys are now healing. So for over 30 years, this is the only way he has thought. Mm -hmm. This is the only way he has processed. This is the only way he's expressed himself. This man is rewiring his brain 
to try and make this relationship work. So you said that he has shown some improvement, but these things trigger him. So in the moment, he's in his emotional mind. Yep. Until he's able to pull himself out and be like, okay, wait a minute, I'm triggered. This is a moment where I can fix what I'm doing to resolve the situation faster. It's going to be hard. Yeah. You have to be patient and you have to acknowledge the moments where he shows improvement. If you guys are having a tense conversation and he stops himself and lowers his tone, say, I saw that. Yeah. You just did that. Fuck yeah, babe. Yep. That's a big deal. Positive affirmations go a long way. Yeah. We should do we should do a a side chat or a side piece after this. Okay. Because that we I, did we do validation already? I think we did. I don't remember. I think we did. I think it's episode three. I have to, I have to look. I, I don't know. My okay. notebook is it's too far to reach. We did because I remember I made the um you post your song on Apple or whatever. Yeah. And you want that validation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Continue going to therapy as a couple and as individuals. Yeah. Because that individual therapy is going to help him process his things on his own without you there, so he can be a little bit more vulnerable about things. You have anything else you want to add? Uh, I'm I'm trying. Oh, the whole punching thing. I was trying to remember what I wanted to talk oh, yeah. about, and and like it, I was drawing a blank. And then when you brought therapy up, I'm like, man, I hate that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so when you w- fellows, if you are one of those guys that gets so angry that you punch holes in the wall. You are telling the world that you are not man enough to, and disciplined enough to control your urges. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have never in my life punched a hole in a wall out of anger. Really? Never. Not once. Not it's once. Hot. I, I've thrown things like right. as a teenager in BPD episodes, but I've never punched a hole in the wall. And I think that part of that is because I watched my stepdad do it when I was little. Um, I, I know one time he caught a two by four as he punched and broke his hand. Um so there's a lesson learned there that you don't punch things that could potentially hurt you more than you right. hurt it. I mean, it's basic common sense. But I know that if you are not able to control your temper enough that you are hitting things or kicking things or even screaming, you lack discipline. Mm-hmm. And you lack the ability to control your your primal urges, which tells me a lot about you as a man. And I don't care how anyone takes that. For everyone that watches this, and I'm sure AJ is going to clip it, if you cannot control your violent urges or your anger and you cannot... Keep your voice maintained, Mm -hmm. not be violent physically by throwing things or punching holes in the wall. I view you as less of a man. I'm going to piggyback off of that and say, if you are a woman who cannot control her volume, throwing things in your man's face from his past, calling him names, degrading him, throwing things, or hysterically screaming and sobbing at the same time, you are less of a woman. Yeah. If you cannot maintain your emotions in a heated discussion with your partner and your go-to is you're a pussy... Come on. Be better. I, um, hmm. I don't know how to say this. This is sound sexist. I never correlated that thing, that entire scenario to a woman. Really? I, cause I've always just experienced crazy emotional women. Yeah. I've never looked at it that way, but because I am a man and I think about it from a man's standpoint, I know, I know when I get to the point where I'm getting ready to lose my temper, I can leave. Mm-hmm. And I, I won't tolerate that kind of screaming and yelling. Right. I've never once been like, well, you're less of a woman if you do that shit. Because it's just in my brain, that's what women do. I don't scream and yell. I know you don't. We don't yell. I know. But, but that that scenario, like that, is just kind of a slap in the face to me. Because yeah. I've never once been like, ladies, if you can't do this, you're less of a woman. Well, I'm saying that because I, I pride myself on being that woman where. Right. When we first got together. And we would have a heated discussion. I wouldn't recognize I was raising my voice. You would point it out to me after the conversation. I'm like, I don't want to be that woman. <clears throat> I don't want to be that woman where my man knows if we're having a heated discussion, I'm going to start yelling at him. And that's something that I am now actively working on. Like when we get into a tense moment, I have to check my volume. Like I have to actively listen to myself and make sure my volume is still in check. Yeah. That's hard. That's discipline. It's definitely discipline. That's, that is making me a better woman. Knowing that when we get into a heated moment that I can take that step back and be like, okay, I understand I'm frustrated. I'm feeling whatever emotion I need to be feeling, but that does not warrant me speaking to him like that. Yeah. I agree with all of that. I I just think that I've never, never correlated the two. It's always just been something that I've expected a woman to do. Yeah. And I expect men to be better. How shitty is that though? Uh, Yeah. And that's the whole point of me bringing it all up. That men just expect women to be overly emotional and scream and yell at them. And that's just normalized. Right. Well, and I'm sure that there are women who expect the same thing from men. So I'm not taking that from them, but in my life experience, I don't do that. Yeah. 
And I don't hang around with men who do that shit. Like mm-hmm. men who lose control of themselves on a regular basis, because it's going to happen to every man at some point. Yeah. You're just going to get pushed too far. But if you're that guy that just flies off the handle every single time, I don't, I don't, I can't keep you around me. Like you're a liability to me at oh, that yeah. point. So like for me to, I, I do pride myself in not getting angry and mm-hmm. trying to stay logic minded because it's a lot harder for me than it is for most people because of my borderline. So like for me to stay grounded is difficult, right? but I don't get to that point. And I'm very good at is when I start to get aggravated to check myself and bring myself back down. Uh, but the idea of being in a relationship with somebody that throws things and, and punches holes in the wall, man or woman, because now that you've said that, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't stay with a woman who does that. Exactly. And I've said it over and over and over again, that if I feel like I'm being attacked or I'm physically being attacked, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and in her email she said that you know she was a she was unable to leave at certain points because he would take the car from her right or prevent her from taking the car. Mm-hmm. I would leave on foot. Oh yeah, I'd walk. Are you gonna physically restrain me? We're gonna fight at that point. Going to the neighbor's house and using their phone to call my mom. Yeah. Don't play games. Yep. I don't know. If you're gonna try to physically restrain me, then it's gonna be rough. Why would you want that? Right. I, I understand that people love each other. And I'm interrupt you. I understand, but I wasn't done with my thought. I understand that people love each other. And if you love each other and you're getting that hostile and you're you're afraid your partner is going to walk out the door and you're not done being heard yet, do you think getting in their face and screaming at them is going to somehow make you heard? Mm-mm. You're going to make the situation worse. Why not just be like, I understand that you're upset right now. Go ahead and take a walk and come back when you're done. I'll calm down a little bit. We can have a discussion. Mm-hmm. You love them, right? You love them enough that, that you want to physically keep them in the house so you can scream at them? Right. What are you, six? Like, I don't know. Also, if your partner needs to go on a walk for 10 or 15 minutes to blow off steam to come back and have a conversation with you calmly, why wouldn't you want them to yeah, do that? Yeah, exactly. Why would you try to prevent that, to have a de-escalated conversation to resolve things instead of screaming at each other? Right. I'm sure that as people are trying to walk out the door, they feel like their partner is abandoning them and people with abandonment issues will feel that way. But if on your way out there, be like, look, I'm mad. Mm-hmm. I need five minutes. I'm going to take a walk. I did that. I've done that twice <clears throat> now. Yeah. And it's not, it's not because of you. I'm just an overly emotional person. So instead of screaming and sobbing in the bathroom, I'm going to go do it in my car. Yeah. You're going to cry in the car. <laughs> and the first time I did that because I was a sobbing mess, I just left and went out to the car and I came back in. You were like, I thought you were leaving. Mm-hmm. And you told me that your BPD kicked in and you thought I was abandoning you. So now I make it a point even if we aren't in a tis- tense moment and something triggers me that morning and I have to sob it out before I can have a conversation, I will tell you, I'm going to go cry in my car. <laughs> and that's it. You're like, okay, let me know what's going on. I, but you know what? Even in that borderline episode, when you walked the door, I didn't chase you. No, you didn't. And when you came back in, I told you, I will never do that. Mm-hmm. I will never chase you. If you want to go there, you can, you can do that. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to beg. Mm-hmm. I don't want you here if you don't want to be here. I don't need you in my life. I fucking want you in my life. But I only want you here if you want to be here. And that's how people should live their lives. You don't need a partner. You don't need anyone. You can do it on your own. It may suck. And it may be hard financially, but you can live your life on your own. You don't need somebody in it. Right. The people that are in your life should be there because you want them there and they want to be there. Not because there's a a financial gain or some sort of leverage where you're using them or they're using you. Like it it that's bullshit. It's a bullshit way to live. Like an addict staying somewhere for free. <clears throat> yeah. I just don't get it. I really don't. Me either. You want to go on to the next one? Yeah. How far into this are we? I don't know because I, I stopped it and okay. I have to cut out some shit. So I, I'm going to guess two hours maybe. Okay. So this one's labeled Spotify podcast follower. Hi, Chris, meaning me. I hope you and your family are doing well. Obviously, I follow you and your husband on TikTok, and I just recently started listening to your podcast on Spotify. You're one of 500,000, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you just slid that in there. Slid it in. I also, before you move on, I want to talk about the iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube thing. For all of you who listen to us on one platform, know that YouTube has the most amount of content. Uh, if you listen to us on Spotify or iTunes, please review us on there and um, play us in the background repeatedly. <laughs> yeah the more our content plays the better reviews we get the better our algorithm is ex- experienced so for those of you who will watch on youtube like you can put one of our playlists on and play it and just go to work 
Yeah. <laughs> you could. If you're sitting at work, open a tab, turn the volume all the way down, and just leave it running while you're doing your work. You could also do it on your computer at home while you're not there. You could. Just turn the volume way down. Let your pets listen to us. Yeah. <laughs> Chris's voice is super soothing. Apparently it is. I, I'm your still getting... Your dogs will love that. I'm still getting comments. I love her voice. I you need to make a sounds. video of 15 minutes going here, kitty, 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 kitty. Yeah, and talking to the dogs so that they can just play you talking to their animals and, and it'll drive our algorithm. I am 100% here for that. <laughs> Be like, who's good boy? <laughs> Where's your balls? <laughs> Where's your rope? Do you have your rope? The first two of those is going to have somebody touching themselves. No! Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Stop it. Yes. Y'all are filthy. <laughs> In my mind, I'm thinking of one of those thick boy pit bulls and <laughs> talking to him like, go get your room. Oh, it's probably a thick boy. Yep, probably. You did that to yourself. <laughs> Ew. Is that what you're thinking? I'm thinking I'm still a virgin. You guys are nasty. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next email. Next email. We already started the email. <laughs> Back to the email. I love all the information and suggestions you guys provide. It's really made a dramatic difference in my current relationship. Love that. So first, thank you. Anytime. My partner and I have implemented so much into our dramatic difference. Oh, wow. They've implemented into their dramatic difference, huh? I read the sentence and started over on the same line. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about going to a pet shelter now and just loving up on all the dogs and then coming back home because there's no obligation for me to take care of them. Yeah. I also don't have the time to take care of a dog. Nope. I would love to. Also, I'm allergic. Yep. The thought of a dog is nice, though. You get a hairless dog. That's a thing. It That's is. a thing now. We and saw that in the movie. It's not now. It's been a thing. <laughs> it's a thing for me now. Yeah. Okay. It is new into my universe. It was an existing thing, but it's new to me. Yep. They're a thing. Hairless dogs. Mm -hmm. Hairless it, cats, hairless I, guinea pigs, hairless rats. I couldn't imagine seeing a massive hairless dog walking around at night. It would look like some sort of demon dog. I know. I'm, I'm like really thinking about that. Now. Like, could I, could I, in that moment at 3 a.m., if I wake up and there's this hairless dog just staring at me on the side of my bed, I would probably scream. I don't so think we I need a hairless dog is what you're saying. <laughs> just to freak you out in the middle of the night. It's because you like scaring me. A little bit. So <laughs> the kids yeah. think it's funny to try to scare us. And they open that door. And I told them the first time they did it, I was like, be aware of what you're doing right now. And they're yep. like, what? And I was like, if you're going to try to play that game, you're going to lose because I'm way better at it than you are. And sure enough. <laughs> she got all three of us. She came home the other day and made him go to the bathroom and was setting up Netflix in the room to watch the little cartoons while she made dinner. And I got all three of them. And I got one of them so bad that he tinkled a little he bit. He did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You don't want to play that game. <laughs> he pulled me aside in the kitchen. He goes, did he pee his pants? <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, I think I made him pee his pants. <laughs> and I turned and I looked at his butt and there was just one little spot. And I was like, you did. <laughs> You got him good. <laughs> and this is how you traumatize your children and wife. Well, sometimes they get me good. Yeah. There's well, times... you're, you're easy, though. I can just walk <laughs> into a room and not say anything and you get scared. <laughs> this morning I was getting ready and I had scissors in my hand cutting my bangs. Right. And he threw open the door and I was like, fuck. And he was like, I was going to pound on the door, but I'm yeah. glad I didn't. Yeah, because I saw the scissors. Oh, my God. There was one morning I was getting our daughter ready. We were looking for her shoes. And it dawned on me I hadn't seen our son in five minutes. So I'm calling out his name, looking around the house. I'm like, where is this kid? And we have a little statue in our kitchen as you walk in. He was hiding next to the statue and the light was off. So I come around the hallway to look into the bathroom for him. And he jumps out from behind the statue. I almost peed myself. <laughs> That's so funny. Smart little buggers. When I'm like in my 50s, y'all can't keep doing this to me. I have to start wearing depends and shit. My bladder control is already bad because of having kids. I haven't thought about the long-term ramifications of this. This is a game now. <laughs> and this will forever be a thing. Yeah. I told you guys. I warned you. I am the victim. <laughs> I, 
I am the sole subject of everybody's frightening. No, you're not. I am. I mean, you get the kids too, but it's you and the kids against me. And I can't scare anybody with my goofy ass. Well, I, I mainly try to get the kids. You're just always in there. Oh, I'm just safe, a byproduct. They feel safest when you're in the room. <laughs> That's smart. I know it is. I, I, I premeditated. I put thought into this shit. It, it's taken everything I had not to buy like a realistic werewolf mask to chase them through the fucking house in the middle of the night. I'm talking lifetime trauma. Like, you need to see a therapist in your 60s because I scare you so bad. When I was like five or six, we were walking around Walmart during Halloween time and my mom, my aunt put on one of those masks and she came running around the corner and right up to me in this cart. I had another dude jump down from a tree while we were trick-or-treating when a wolf mask and chase me while I heard my mom laughing as mm -hmm. I'm running away from my life. Yeah. My partner and I have implemented so much into our relationship, sometimes I can't even believe it's real. But I have another question now. My partner suffers from severe BPD, anxiety, depression, PTSD, and he's on the autism spectrum. He was fully forthright and honest about, it, about this when we first started dating, and I acknowledged it. We've been together a little bit now, and honestly, I love these sparkles about him. I embrace his diagnoses, and I honestly don't think I would be with him if he didn't have these attributes. I get that. If you weren't the person that you are, I don't think I would be with you. And it's because of your BPD the way that you are. I was checking to see if there are Patreons. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I disagree with that statement. Why? Because I, I would just be who I am, but a lot more calm. Yeah. And, and logical because I'm already a very logic brain thinking person. Right. If I could remove the emotional brain aspect from everything, I would be a very different individual. But I, I don't think that you would... I don't think that it would be a different in a bad way. I disagree. <clears throat> yeah. The way that you love is very deeply. And I don't think that you would love that same way if you didn't have your BPD. Well, I agree with that. Yeah, we definitely love different. I've said yeah. that a lot. Yep. So I, I think it would definitely be, you'd be a whole different person. Yeah, in that aspect, you're not wrong. I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate the things about you. I've, I have heard you briefly mention a couple of times that you, and I think possibly Chris as well, struggle with certain sparkles yourself, and I was hoping that you guys could elaborate a bit more on the struggles and challenges of your dynamic from the perspective of a partner that isn't experiencing the episode. For example, my partner is currently in the mindset of a pretty intense mania, outrageous spending, lack of sleep, obsessive and intrusive thoughts, lack of appetite... These are all things I have experienced that I would appreciate. He began communicating with me before he does the thing, whatever it may be, and he does well. Okay, I'm confused. So she was just giving me an example of what's happening, but he still makes it a point to say, hey, I'm going to do this before I do it. She wants him to. She just wants to be on the roller coaster at the beginning of the ride, not halfway through it, which is not fucking healthy. It's not healthy. I, I like to know that you're getting on a roller coaster. Yeah. And I can stand on the ground and like wave to you while you're up there. <laughs> but I need to know that you're getting on the roller coaster. I don't want to get on it with you. Right. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to get into any of that mm -hmm. because we've done we've discussed that a lot right. at this point and I'm not going to rehash all those conversations. Uh, I will recommend three books that you can read <clears throat> and I recommend him read them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Buddha and the Borderline. Not really a whole lot about Buddhism. I don't know why they named it that way. It is in there, but it's not the prevalent part of the book. Right. Uh, Stop Walking on Eggshells. I Love You, I Hate You, Don't Leave Me. Mm -hmm. Buy those books. Listen to them. Watch them. Read them. Whatever you got to do and implement that into your life. That's going to solve a whole lot of things. She also asked if it's covered in any of our episodes. What's the one called? All Wait. of them. It's a, we we uh, Not all of them, but a lot. Um, side Piece Episode 1. Uh, two and three, mm -hmm. uh, or no, two and three both have borderline discussions. And I know that for a fact. The one that we did on New Year's Day, which is called I Apologize, that one has it in there. Mm -hmm. There are, there's a lot at this point. You you need to go on YouTube. It's sprinkled everywhere. Yeah, but there's, they are, uh, they should be labeled. Mm -hmm. Like this is part of the conversation. And BPD is a very prevalent thing on our YouTube channel. It is. So I watch that content. And if you still have questions, fire us another email because then you can be specific with your questions. But I'm not I'm not repeating all of that again and again and again. Okay. 
Side Piece Episode 2 comes out Friday uh, the 17th. And then I believe the 21st or 24th, 24th will be the following uh, Friday that Mm -hmm. uh, Episode 3 will come out. Unless you're part of the Patreon. If you're part of Patreon or you are a YouTube subscribed member, those videos are already available. They're in the member section. <clears throat> That's so dope. Right. I want to every, every time we do an, a side piece because I'm excited. I want that content out right now. Mm-hmm. So at least I can get it out to some people and then I can get feedback and then we can release it to the masses on Friday. Hell but yeah. I'm, I, I'm enthusiastic about those. Me too. Because it's not an email. It is a conversation where you and I get to engage and throw what if scenarios at each other. And it, it's a very different conflict resolution. It is. It really pushes my critical thinking. Mine too. Yeah, it makes me feel good when we're done, though. I feel like I've actually done something versus just giving my opinion. It also makes me feel like I understand certain scenarios better now. When you put that deep thought into a topic and you really figure out how you feel about something. Right, with no skin in the game. Yeah. Because if we get mad at a scenario, it's made up. Mm -hmm. We're not getting mad at an email with a person behind the email. We're not getting mad at each other because it is a made-up scenario. It's all bullshit. Right. So... (sighs) Are we done? Yeah, that, that was like three or four emails. Okay. Uh, well, that that's an hour on this one, so we may only be at like two hours. You want to do more? We can do one more. Let's just do one more just to be safe. Let's well, uh, let's do... Um, did we do the one that came in when we first sat down? Okay. I didn't scan any other let's, ones. Let's hit some thank yous. Go into the thank you folder. Oh, there's a thank you folder? Yep. Forgot about that one. All right. First one. You guys are great. Yeah. Love the podcast and the content. I stumbled across Peach's page probably about four months ago and dove into both of your TikTok pages. I love the fact you guys are, you are traditional and show how those ideals work today. I love that you show people that traditional type relationships doesn't have to be this incredibly negative thing like so many people see it in today's world. Mm. I found out, I found out about the podcast probably two weeks ago and have been listening to that on my way to and from work. Love that. That's crazy. People are making it a routine. Yep. I'm going to wake up in the morning, brush my teeth, do my hair, get dressed, get in the car and put on the podcast. Yep. I do that with Tim Ross in the basement. So I get it. I oh. absolutely get it. It's That's audiobook. Crazy. It's audiobook. Andy Frisilla's um, Hard AF, or what mm. is it? Not Hard AF. Um, Real AF. Yeah. Andy Frisilla's Real AF or Tim Ross the Basement. That's every single time I drive by myself. Those are my first three. That's every yeah. single time. I listen to Tom Ross after I drop the kids off yeah. at school on my way home. Yeah. Now that Andy Frisilla is Tim Ross, you mean? Yeah, Tim Ross. Uh, what you, did I you say? said Tom. I was Tom. like, who the hell is Tom Ross? Um, oh, I was also thinking Bob Ross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Andy Frasilla, the the real AF now has a YouTube channel. Yeah. And because I know it's monetized, I will listen on YouTube instead of on the streaming service because even though he doesn't advertise anything, there's no sponsorships on his program. So mm-hmm. he gets money for playing on YouTube versus playing on iTunes. So seriously, for those of you guys who listen only on streaming services, I really appreciate that. But for the love of God, please go to our YouTube channel yeah, because we actually make money off of that. It, it incentivizes us to keep making content because we're getting paid for it. We're also doing this a lot. Yeah. This is a full-time job. It started and, off as a hobby, yeah. but... Well, and, and, and this morning you came to me very seriously. Like, I want to start clipping... I want to start getting involved with the editing. Yeah. So it's going to become even more time intensive for you. I, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. And that's why I'm contemplating on not doing the apprenticeship, not doing the apprenticeship. I do have somebody who has been waiting months now because of the hurricane and whatnot to get tattooed. So I am still going to follow through on those. Yeah. But I don't think I'm going to dedicate two years of my life to this right now. Yeah. I, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah. I mean, it was at first. But this is definitely something that's much more important to me. Right. <clears throat> I will say after the first one, I definitely felt I have definitely left with some notes and comments. One of the big things I remember thinking about was in addition to just talking to your partner and handling issues civilly, you both need to be ready to listen and to be receptive in order to have effective communication. I was happy to hear you guys discuss that in a segment of episode two. I literally thought to myself, I was literally thinking about this. I think you guys are putting a great message and great information out there. I am fairly young. I'll be 24 in less than a week and have been in a new stable relationship for almost a year now. We have been doing great and I will credit a lot of that to us addressing our expectations in the relationship early on. I can attest to the things you're putting out there. 
We hold ourselves and each other accountable for, to those expectations, and it definitely helps. We have had yet to have any major arguments or even heated discussions in part because it is still a young relationship, but also because we both approach and start conversations in a manner that is not aggressive or argumentative in nature. Pause. So that that scenario is why we feel so bad mm -hmm. when we have heated debates. Yeah. We feel like ass oh, yeah. when we have arguments. Like, And it's never... It's never just an argument. Like we'll have the argument and then afterwards we feel like garbage. Yeah. And we have to then work through why we feel so bad about what just happened. And that is a whole nother process. It's healthy to, to not have arguments and have proper communication. But when you do have them because you're not used to having conflict with your partner, it, ma hard. it makes you really not want to have conflict with your partner. Yeah. Yep. So be prepared for that. When you guys finally have a real argument, you're going to feel like shit afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a whole new process of emotions. Yeah. Being in a healthy relationship is one of the hardest things I've done. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a clip. Really? It's yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. Like I've said, like I I thought I had my shit together and then I get into a re healthy relationship and I'm like, damn, I, I, I'm not like I'm still a dumpster fire. It's crazy. I'm definitely better. I'm definitely growing in our relationship, but when we have moments like that, it makes me realize like I do have unresolved shit that I still yeah. need to work on. <laughs> was that really that funny to you? That was it was that funny. Being in, in a healthy relationship was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Yeah. That's what you just said. It's hard to change who you are as a person. It, it really is, but that's not how that equates. It's supposed <laughs> to be I'm in a healthy relationship and everything is amazing. It is. Everything is great. It's fantastic, but it's also really challenging. Because as somebody who came from a toxic environment all of my life, getting into a healthy relationship where I'm now being challenged to live life in a healthy way and unlearn all of my toxic traits, that shit's rough. I get that. Um, for example... Avoiding starting conversations with the word you as it definitely shifts blame in one direction as you guys discussed in episode one or two. I definitely love the check-ins idea and think we'll be implementing that or something similar into our relationship. I also think after listening to four episodes, I should definitely share the podcast with her. Yes, yes, you should. And we could use that as a bonding point as well as something to provide deeper conversation yep. between us. That was, I was going to say that. I'm glad they covered that. We get in Discord... A lot of people saying that they will listen together and pause and discuss what we are discussing mm -hmm. so that they are on the same page. It also leads them <clears> to <throat> conversations that they would never have otherwise yep. because they didn't think of it. That's huge. Massive. Yep. And I'm willing to bet that the people who do that mm -hmm. in Discord, that people who have said that, feel like we do. When we're reading an email and we work through something that we would have other never otherwise never worked through or discussed. Yeah. Because we go through that. We do. So for them to pause and have a conversation and it evolve their own way, they're feeling exactly what we're feeling by working through our shit on camera. The only difference is they're not being recorded. That's crazy. It's wild when you think about it. That is really wild. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I hit 500,000 subscribers on TikTok. Followers. They're followers on TikTok. 500,000. I can't, yeah. my mind is blown. We hit 18,000 people on YouTube today. We did, yeah. I was trying to think of another word for what I was going to say, so I'm just going to say the first thing that came to my mind. You said 500,000 followers again. I was like, okay, so your beanbag snake is just hitting the floor. You got to relax a little bit. <laughs> my beanbag snake. Yeah. Beanbag snake. Because I can't say the other one. Yeah, that's wild. I'm I am so shocked and humbled by all of this. Yeah, I, I really am. That shit last night with Amber really threw me for a loop. Oh yeah, totally put me off kelter. Yeah, I laughed so loud. Like I was so tickled at the fact that somebody recognized us that I heard myself laugh and then it echoed. <laughs> and yeah. I I saw all of these people looking at us and I was like I don't care I'm having a good time. Yeah, that that was one of the most humbling experiences I've ever had in my life. It was wild. Yeah, I, I'm on cloud nine. I am elated from all of this. Yeah. And it came at just the right time. It did. You know, when I became a body piercer working at the shop, I was ready to be recognized because I recognized the artist in this town. Mm -hmm. It is totally different to have your face on the internet and then have one, someone stop you in public almost three hours away from your hometown and say, I love your guys' videos. Yeah, yeah more than 100 miles. <sighs> that was a massive moment. Yeah. That's a core memory for me now. Yeah, me too. I will never forget her and I will never forget that first email we received. Right. Yep, yep. Keep kicking all the negative t negativity to the curb. 
People will oppose and hate that which they do not understand. Mm -hmm. I'll keep listening and taking notes. And once again, I appreciate what you guys are doing. Excited to listen to episode five this week. So we are far behind. Uh, Yeah, we are way behind on emails. Or, so this was sent February 5th. And so we're not that far then. We're We're not. They're catching up. So are we. <laughs> so we're both catching up. We're, we're both, It's called teamwork. We're moving in the same direction, just at different times. Go team. <laughs> so I'm going to move that to recorded. Yeah. Let's do one more. Okay. Thank you. Emails make me feel good. Thank you for making me feel that I'm not alone. Ooh. That hits my heart. Yep. We've heard that a lot. We have heard that a lot. That is one of the things that I love most about what we're doing is that people no longer feel like they're alone. Yep. And that discord, that's like my number one thing. I've even said like people like feeling like they're a part of something. Mm-hmm. So creating that discord, you will never be alone in that discord. Right. There is always somebody on there who is willing to talk to you and give you encouragement. And have you noticed that every time a new person pops in, people greet them? Oh, yeah. Everybody pops it's off. Never, it's never like, who's this newcomer? Like right. they're always like, hey, welcome, blah, blah, blah. Oh, shit. You're here. Yeah, like I love that. There are times when I'm in there, if I catch someone pop in, I'll respond to every single one and be like, welcome. Thanks for being here. Oh my God, you're here. Holy shit. Stop it. And if I miss a few, I'll at everybody in the chat and be like, I've missed a few newcomers, but you guys being here is the dopest thing ever. I love it. Yeah. That's a big deal to me. Like I make it a point to welcome everybody. I know you have everything going on with like the editing and all this other shit. Like, so you really can't take the time. I try though. You do. You definitely do. It's it's been recognized. Somebody messaged me on Patreon uh last night at like 10 30 mm-hmm. and, and specifically said you've answered a few of my messages and my emails i know that you guys are busy i see you responding on tiktok i know that you're on patreon and now you're doing discord i just want to thank you for the amount of work that you're putting in because i know that you guys are actually taking the time oh that's super dope yeah, to hear it made me feel really good because it is it is a lot it is and you know like when i was working out this morning i stopped my workout to spend five or ten minutes in the discord and message people yep and when I'm cleaning, if I think about Discord, I stop what I'm doing and I hop onto the Discord because it is important for me to feel like they are receiving our attention. Yep. We got 40 emails last night in two and a half hours while we were there. Oh my God. Yep. Obviously not all of them were from people. Some of them were Discord or Patreon emails and some of them were like my normal emails. Mm-hmm. But I turned my phone on to do not disturb last night for the first time ever at like four o'clock in the afternoon and kept it off until I went to bed last night. It was mm-hmm. stayed off until this morning. That's the the most quiet I've had in three months. Yeah, I we commented on it last night because you were yeah. over there checking shit. And you're like, so and so just messaged and blah 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 blah. And I'm like, I my shit's on. Do not disturb. I'm yeah. taking a break. It was very nice. Very, I bet it was very nice. Very nice. <clears throat> Hello there. I have been with my husband for 15 years now. Married for five, and we have two children who are nine and 11 months old. So nine years old and then 11 months old. You were so close to done, and you had to start all over again. That is being pretty close to done. Yeah. (laughs) You were at the halfway mark. (laughs) I just wanted to send you this email to thank you for sharing your life and relationship with us. It's super nice to see that there are people out there who have the same thought process when it comes to life and relationships. Even though me and my husband have been together for 15 years, it still feels like we are in the honeymoon period. Ooh. I love that. Yeah. That's my favorite shit to hear. Is it? To be in the honeymoon phase in 15 years. You know how hard that is? That's rare. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a lot of work. That is a lot of work. That's not something that just comes naturally. So let me ask you something. The other morning in the gym, you said you felt like that our honeymoon period ended a while ago. Right. So what do we have now? We are still in the honeymoon phase. Yeah. By choice is what I meant by that. Okay. Because it... it, the the lust the constant touching the um the flirting and the, grabbing the, and all of it aggression we, we do all of it yeah but it's by choice now mm-hmm. we are making active decisions to do that shit because it's not just on a whim right i still walk by and be like mm. and I, i'm doing the thing oh yeah <laughs> but it it's a decision yeah now does that make sense it does make okay. sense Because we could 100% be that we landed each other. Right. We're set. There were times where I still look at you. I'm like, oh my God, that's my man. Yeah. Like I still look at you like you're this amazing human being when I first was interested in you. I I get that. Yeah. And I do the same thing. I really do. The, um, The reason I don't think that we're in the honeymoon phase anymore is because it would be easy 
it would be easy to just edit, do the podcast, mm-hmm. watch TV, go to bed. I could do that. Yeah. But when when everything is very new, that you don't you don't feel that way. Like you you really obsess over your person. I choose to obsess over you now, mm-hmm. um, because I get up from editing. I'll be editing. I'm like, wonder what she's doing. Yeah. And instead of just going, eh, oh well. I go, okay, now I'm gonna go see what she's doing. And yeah. I will walk into the other room to see what you're doing. If you're in the bathroom with the bathroom door shut, um, our bathroom has a separate bathroom with a toilet. So if that door's shut, I'm not I'm not opening that door. Yeah. But the bathroom door that's open, if it's closed and you're in the shower, or you're doing your makeup, I'm walking the bathroom. Mm-hmm. See what you're doing. I wanna know what you're doing in here. Yeah. Um, those are those are choices. <laughs> that's a decision I'm making because I want to be Right. In your life in that moment. I don't have to do that. Yeah. And that's why I said I think our honeymoon phase ended, but we are we are thriving mm-hmm. by by choice. That was actually a compliment when I said that. I guess because we were in the gym, it didn't come out all the way because it's probably my turn to start working. Yeah. Well, um, I appreciate you clarifying that. I would have preferred to have had that conversation way before now. <laughs> well, I didn't think anything of it until you, we just read that and you were like, that's dope. And yeah, I'm like, but, it is. but wait a minute. <laughs> that's because not, that takes work. It does. That's not, that's not, uh, I don't know. That's not just a natural thing. They, they are, they are putting the work in to, to be in that, that phase still. This little button on my chair is loose. Yeah. Just yeah. push it in and leave it alone. It's not, oh God, I can't. Telling me to leave it alone knowing it's loose. Yeah. It's like having a hair on my chin and not being obsessed with it. So back to what we were saying, I make it a point to come back here and annoy you while you're editing. Right. <laughs> or like if you're in the bathroom for an extended period of time, I will walk in there and be like, what you doing? Yep. You pooping or something? I miss you. <laughs> and I'll sit on the bathtub and sit there and talk to you while you're in the bathroom with the door closed. Uh, That's a choice. It is a choice. Right. And you could very easily just stay on TikTok. Yeah. I know you like hearing me say I miss you. So when I miss you, I come and tell you. Right. I do like that. And and that makes me want to continue doing the things that I do. Yeah. Smacking the butt, grabbing you, kissing you, all of that. Like that, It I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to lose that. Right. I don't want to lose the feeling of the honeymoon phase. Mm-hmm. So even when I am tired and exhausted and editing and busy, I am making a decision to come and do the things that I'm doing because I want this to continue. Oh, yeah. Until I can't keep up with it. What do you mean you can't keep up with it? Yeah. Like I'd be like 80. Okay, so when you can't keep up with it, I'm just going to pick up the slack. Yeah, I'm going to live on Cialis and testosterone. I'm a stay-at-home mom and housewife while my husband works super hard to provide for me and our kids. We have never had a screaming argument purely because we both grew up around arguments and fights, and we don't like that confrontation because of that. Love that. So we both sit down and talk it out when the kids are in bed. Love that even more. That's the way to do it. Our childhoods are completely opposites. His childhood wasn't the best while I had a great childhood, besides the fights and the arguments. And I am so proud of my husband. He is the only one in his family to break the cycle of abuse and get so much shit from some of his family members. He is so gentle with the kids, and he does seem... And he does help me discipline them when absolutely needed, which isn't very often, as we have very well-behaved kids. We don't shout at our kids or hit them as discipline as we don't believe in that. We find a stern voice and explaining to them what they and explaining to them when they ask why it works a lot, especially when it comes to our eldest, as he is in the process of being assessed for autism and ADHD. That whole sentence is wrong. Right, but we get it. Okay. So you don't have to read it again. You can just skip to the next one. I know, I know. That, I know that you want to. I can see it in your face. Just skip it. Go to the next because one. Because I'm trying to process and make it make sense. Right. I made it make sense. That's me fixating. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm telling you the next sentence. Oh, man. Thank you so much. I needed that. (laughs) I would have sat there and looked at that forever. I know. And that's how you pull your partner out of something. (laughs) I'm I'm the captain now. (laughs) Read it. You can't snap at me and then say something super seductively in my ears. Sure I can. I just did. I mean, you did. Of course, it's legal. I enjoy it. But you can't expect me to be like, okay, let's keep going. (sighs) (laughs) The snap. The snap is what did it. I know it was. I love it when you snap at me. (laughs) (sighs) You know how many people right now's head is exploding over that statement. I can't believe she said that. How dare I did say that. And I'm going to say it again. I fucking love it when my man snaps at me, his woman. All right. Time out. Time out. 
So for the full hormone panel from Titan Medical, it's normally two hundred dollars. If you use the to be better code, it drops it to one fifty for a male. Uh, for a female panel, it's normally three hundred, and if you use the code, uh, it'll drop it to two twenty five. And they gave me the link for the new new patient paperwork. So now we know. It will save you 50 to 75 bucks to use the, the To Be Better Titan code when you call them. It's a lot of money. And they gave me the new patient link so I can put that in the description. Fantastic. I love that. Thank uh-huh. you. Thank you, Titan. That's a that's a pretty big savings. To save it somebody is. 50 bucks is a big deal. Like, yeah. That could be gas. Yeah. It could be a lot of things. It could be a dinner night. It could mm-hmm. be a date night once you get your hormones fixed. Yeah. Or you can do the date night now and anticipate. Yeah. You know what? Before I keep going, I want to touch on the anticipation of things. When you build anticipation in your relationship, it is going to be so much more exciting and fun filled. That's how you continue the hunt. Let's add that to the side piece. Side piece. Yeah. I wish I could say the same about our relationship. While my husband has loads of positive from his coworkers about us, many people think I'm stupid for being the traditional wife and tell me we live in the 21st century and to get a grip, which I always reply, which I always reply with, as long as my husband and children are happy, I'm happy. I am so sorry. You're so miserable. Mm. Misery loves company. Which normally sends them into a spiral. I get that. Women want, on my TikTok specifically, want to hype you up for being a man and provider and doing all the things that you do, but they want to shit on me because I'm a stay-at-home wife. And this is the 21st century and I'm setting women back. You know what it is. Those women that are hyping me up want the life that you have. Right. And there's some some bitterness there. I'm being a, a little bitter Betty. Are you jealous? <clears throat> of little old me who did the work to get the man of my dreams huh just rub it in why don't you i oh yeah like i just little paper cut with lemon juice on it some salt yeah just a little rub it in there <laughs> i want people to be jealous of my man it, yeah oh yeah of me or of i what landed you have? that <laughs> do you see that specimen of a man that's, that's mine <laughs> And my goofy ass landed him. All the women in the world, you're like, mm, you're trying so hard to make me blush. One. Let's 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 move on, please. I'm not trying you, to make you, you blush. Are, are you blushing? Though? Maybe a little bit. I'm trying to hide behind the microphone. Okay, I'll keep going. Like in many of your podcasts, communication is so important, which we tell people when they ask for advice, especially like my husband's coworkers. Don't get wrong, our relationship was rocky about 10 years ago when I got pregnant with our son, purely because we used to party hard before we came pregnant, and my husband wasn't the man he was then. Do you mean that he wasn't the man that he is now? Yes. Okay. He wasn't happy that the partying had to end, or we had to calm down a bit, but something clicked when we, got, when we went to our 20-week scan on Halloween of 2012, which totally fits our aesthetic, I might add. I love that for you. Like, I genuinely love that for you. I'm obsessed with like Halloween and spooky season. And if I could have had like anything happen around that time, like my goal was to give birth around Halloween. Yeah. And it didn't happen. So for the fact that you guys got to be able to go get a scan like on Halloween, that would have been a moment for me. And we found out we were having a boy. That night we had a long talk and we found out that my husband was just scared that he might become like his dad and he didn't want that. The day our son was born, he was totally smitten with him and he still is. They are like two peas in a pod, and he is the greatest dad to them. And I am so happy and proud that he is my children's dad. I'm also grateful that my son and daughter will hopefully learn from me and my husband on how a healthy relationship works by watching how we act around them. They absolutely will. Oh, 100%. Again, sorry for rambling. Just super excited and happy I found you guys, because I don't feel alone and grateful for some more advice while listening to your podcast, which is fucking awesome, by the way. She said that, and I just agree with it. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, it is, is that her or you? It's written. I can okay. zoom in. It's her. Got okay. It. Yeah. She said it. I know it's something it sounds like I would say. <laughs> I hope you're both. I hope you both and your children are well, and I can't wait for the next episode. Oh, she included a picture of um. I'm going to. Can you see it? Yep. Oh, look at that. Yep. That's, That's funny. Damn. Yep. Little baby. That's wild. That makes me happy. I, okay, so she said it. I'm sorry if it's weird to include the photo. I like it when people include photos. If you feel comfortable enough to send us a photo of you and your family, I can put a face to who is divulging themselves, or I was going to say soul, to us. It makes it more real. Yeah. 
Yeah, it puts a face behind the email. Right. We're able to connect a real human being to the words that are being written. Like these are her actual thoughts. Yep. She sat down and thought about this email and, and what she wanted to say to us. took the time to actually type it up and send it. Crazy. It is crazy because there was no reason for it. We, no. we didn't interact with her ever at all. And she's just like, I want to let you guys know that you're awesome. So I'm going to sit down and send these people a thank you email. I think about that when we get those emails. Me I don't too. just read them and go, yeah, next. No, they took I, the time. I always go, they actually took the time to sit down and type us a message. Mm-hmm. Time out of their day, time away from their partner, time away from their kids, even if they're taking a poop. Right. And they are sending the email while on the toilet. Mm-hmm. You are dedicating time that you could be playing your game, TikToking, whatever that you're doing, to send us a thank you. You know, it's more than just it's sitting insane. down. It's more than just sitting down and typing it out, too. Yeah, they got to put thought behind it. There's days of thought of like, what do I want to say? How do I word this? Are they going to even read it? Am I wasting my time? Right. Yeah. How can I actually articulate <clears throat> my thanks to them? We read every thank you email. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. And I cry a lot. <laughs> yes, you do. I do. You know, I'm actually starting to... <laughs> So with my crying, I used to suppress that a lot. I used to get in trouble when I cried. Yeah. So that was something that I always thought was, I just can't do in front of people. And this podcast is making me realize it's okay to cry in front of people. Yeah, absolutely it is. Like the fact that I can sit here and cry and continue speaking, like that's a big deal for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would be a big deal for me too if I could do it. I'm not there yet. I hope that like helps normalize it for people. Like it's okay to feel emotions. Yeah. And you can continue a conversation while crying. You don't have to halt it and be consoled. Yeah. I have to halt it because I can't talk and cry at the same time. Yeah. Can't breathe. You'll get there. Yeah. I mean, I have to cry more for that to be a thing. But yeah. anyways, are we done? That was the yeah, last order one. Order some food and then do some. <laughs> Going to order some food and then do another a side piece. Yeah. All right. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye. For those of you who enjoy our content and would like to support us and help grow the channel, the easiest way to do that is a super chat here on YouTube. For those of you who really, really like the content and would like to see more of it, check out our Patreon group. It gets exclusive content that will never be seen here on YouTube, early release stuff for those of you who are just as impatient as I am, as well as live streams with a live chat every Friday night. If you can't afford to do either one of those or you're just not into that, the next best thing that you can do is share this with people who you feel may vibe with it. No matter how you decide to support us, it's super dope and we thank you.